look at the axe in the chat. Oh, happy birthday voice, I guess. No, don't guess. Just give him the damn birthday. <laughs> it's like, oh, get, yeah, it's actually, like, I was about well, to say, I don't know if voice, oh, voice can't even, but a voice mm-hmm. can't, because he's a patron. He can access the patron chant. Yeah, I could see you people. Yeah. The secret no, room yes. for our patrons who chat about patron stuff. By the way, yes, I the mics are live now. Ooh, I'm very loud. Awesome. Hold on. Let me step me back. Let me step me back. Make a whole bunch of background noise I'm going to have to cut out later. Whatever. But hey, it's fine. Hi, we're here, everybody. Uh, well, I guess since we're starting, I should go ahead and say... Oh, wait, hold on. i got to pull up a list for this. What? Because there's more people. Actually, i got to do seven. four names now. So we got to look at the wait, thing. Wait, we're up to four? Yes. Do the thing! Oh my god, we're up to 133 bucks. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I can't so... handle this. So let's go ahead and sort that. All right. Okay. Hey, everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you this episode started. is brought to you by our patrons like Ahago Comics, Qua, Drago66, and Nestor Flores. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can access to those early and lots of other goodies, and it would really help us out. Thanks for your support, everybody. Thank you. So, do you know what I'm going to start this off with? I'm going to start this off with... Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you and you and you, bitches! The perfect rhythm. Gee, lucky, I'm, I'm glad you care. I do care. I care enough that I wanted you on um on our show the day of your birthday because you totally didn't have anything better to do. Totally, no. <laughs> Definitely not. No, this is the highlight of my entire week every week. <laughs> like, you know, for real, like, are you, like, I was like, it's your birthday, man. It's like, even if you're an adult, you need to make it special. Are you doing anything special for your birthday? Uh, well, I told my dad, no matter what, I want to go out to eat because I was, I don't know, I had food on the brain. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to make a plan out of this, so... That alone, like, would make me happy just because I am somehow focused on it. Well, actually, like, here's the crazy thing. Like, if you actually look it up, you can find out, like, a whole bunch of places that'll give you, like, free food just because it's your fucking birthday. Yeah. But then, (laughs) don't they like to sing you happy birthday? Oh, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes not. Like, I know if you go to, like... That's always my, that's always my concern. Uh, because as, as, as an anxious person, going out into public and having... Rando stranger sing me happy birthday uh is not bring me joy it brings me <laughs> crippling shame and sadness yeah well I w- it wouldn't bring me yeah it w- actually no it would bring me shame and sadness i would like turn i would go from dark brown to dark red in an instant but I would like just, you i know, remember crawl under the booth and die yeah but yeah boy yes everyone voice of saint course is with us and he's actually got the proper setup so he doesn't sound like he's in a suit of armor falling downstairs hey man it was only because i had to show up <laughs> I felt obligated. We kind of did rope you into it. We're like, hey, boys, you want to show up on your birthday? And you're like, sure. And it's like, yes, verbal contract. <laughs> I was looking forward to this, yes. Yeah. Yep. So we're probably going to go for maybe like, what, three hours probably? It's voice. Maybe. There's going to be we'll a lot see. of talk. Yeah. We'll have a lot of stuff to talk about. I don't know. Do we have anywhere we want to we wanna begin? Um, I want... Well, where I'm going to begin real quick is, um, hey, everyone, if you are fluent in both Japanese and English, head over to yenpress.com. They are actually hiring translators for light novels. Like, Good. last yeah, like uh, last week I was talking about how like light novels are becoming a bigger and bigger thing over here. They generally are. Yenpress is looking to expand their staff on it. Which no more I, skeleton crews. Please, no. no. Ske- Please, God, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, and I find this is a great thing, because, A, well, as much as I like fans' translations, I kind of hate the turf wars they have going on with each other, especially, mm. um, but you kind of get that in just about any internet situation. Like, <laughs> do you know how many times I see, like, fit, fuck, kiss manga screens anytime I'm reading manga on kiss manga? I'm like, hmm, you guys are salty. Yeah, oh, actually, it's funny enough, talking about that, I know this isn't less tech FTO, but, um, that's a... That's a long-standing thing, a rivalry between 4chan's FGO threads and the FGO subreddit, where, uh, you know, image uh, caps or, or uh, data pulls would have fuck Reddit embedded in there somewhere. <laughs> it's just, I don't, I don't know why some internet communities have to fight, but they really do. Like, there's a lot of that. A lot of, like, um, you know, you go to the classics about, um, like, manga scanlations, there's all kinds of, like, 
hey, you know, make sure you didn't pay for this scan or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Always check out, uh, you know, whoever the scan leaders are and all that stuff. You see, and, like, here's the thing. Like, this is the reason why I don't mind Kismanga. Well, I said Kismanga is kind of a piece of garbage, but it's a convenient piece of garbage. So that's why I fucking use it. But Kismanga, like, literally all they do is they literally, like, have, like, probably, like, some code that hooks up to all these translator sites. And whenever they post something there, they literally just copy, paste it, and put it on there, like, with translator page and everything. Uh -huh. So it's all, like, the main reason that people get pissed about this shit is because it's pulling ad revenue away from their own yeah. sites. Like, but hey, they're an aggregator, and that's what they do. But also, yeah, uh, yeah, no, like I mean, you want to talk about convenience? That's honestly convenience is the root of all like piracy. Really, it's just yeah. is is your service too much of a pain in the ass to use regularly? And if it is, yes, people are gonna are gonna pirate your stuff because that's yeah. why a lot of people uh will go against like Funimation or Crunchyroll because they have certain functions on their websites that are uh, really inconvenient to use or had been yeah. inconvenient to use. Crunchyroll's yeah. actually recently updated their... Uh, yeah, I think Crunchyroll understands they're kind of in a weird player. position. Well, so, yeah, to better, me, Crunchyroll still. always struck me as kind of like the, the government contractor of the anime world, you know, lowest <laughs> bid always. I feel like Right, Based right. on the numbers they put in the they put in the money at least back to the anime producers, but I and okay, that's where the money needs to go, I guess, is to the people who make the shows. But at the same time, they're what they give us on the on the you know website side isn't the best. Um, you know, there are people who point out goofs in their subtitles. They never re-upload like episodes. The they, they always use a, the um, um, the broadcast they quality. They the don't do the Blu-ray uploads. For the longest time. Yeah, they were using a Flash player for the longest time. They only yeah. recently updated it to be mm -hmm. more convenient. Because they had to, because the Flash video. is going away in a year or two. Yeah. Um, uh, they don't have a good way that you can resume your videos. Like, they have, yeah, they have lots of weird interface problems, because clearly, like I said, they're the lowest bidder. They throw the money at the people in Japan, and like, give me your license, and they're like, okay, you, you know, you're paying for entire episodes of our series here on your own, so fuck yeah, we'll give you the license. They throw it up on their website. And then they're done with it. Um, like, like I said, yeah, I don't like, think I don't think they go back and use like Blu-ray remasters, which maybe they can't because then the, the you know the people who do dubs and stuff over here maybe they have the Blu-ray rights and they don't match up. But then maybe if you're Crunchyroll and you're getting the friggin' simulcast rights, maybe you should work that out. I don't know. Like, well, here's the thing: the anime is like, what industry the in the U.S. is yet? really weird and and kind of labyrinthine at this point because we've gone through so many phases like um yeah. and know, also consider japan doesn't even care for streaming it's still foreign to them like, which is really weird because japan is the place that has it had cell phone internet for forever right <laughs> like they have a way better internet infrastructure than we do because they've been doing like cell phone games for years years and years on heck you know, over like, there it's so strange how they deal with streaming and just internet like video and such that nico nico doga is a competitor to youtube over there whereas over here there is no competitor there's a few uh, there's a few video websites mm -hmm. but like no one considers anything as on par as youtube it's, it's yeah. very strange over there like it's, we have like yeah, daily it's, motion i think that's like maybe the fucking closest mm -hmm. thing maybe. And or like only, Vimeo and i think it's yeah. only those websites because because they're smaller and they can be looser with some of the restrictions that youtube has yeah. it's if they were as yeah, big like, as youtube they'd probably have run into the same problems youtube ran into where people suddenly started paying attention and then they'd have to mm -hmm. change anyway uh, it's like as a as I, again, I mostly use, like, I'm not too, like, fussed about my quality because the way I think of it is, like, I don't know what quality they get their episodes over in Japan when they stream, when they, I mean, when they air them. Because I'm pretty, I'm not sure if they're getting, like, t um, Blu-ray Blu quality um, episodes on their TVs, like, immediately. That's something yeah. that people have to wait for the release for. No, it's, uh, but, so yeah, yeah, my point, though, was, like... Still have Record all of the episodes you want to rewatch on a DVD or Blu-ray of your own. So, or yeah. on a, uh, oh, what's it called? The, um... DVR, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Man. So it's like, I like I can understand for, like, older shows that have come out and had the Blu-ray release, but then that's probably, like, a, again, like, an, another additional license. Like, you have Yeah, I know. Like, I can kind of understand this. how that would be complex, but that's definitely, like, a quality hit, because everybody should know, if you watch a lot of anime, like, if you want that ideal experience, you want to make sure you get the, the Blu-ray version, because that is touched up from the TV releases. Yep. That's universal to like everybody 
It's they, As if it's if it's something that's just coming out in Japan, like one I'm watching, I'm like, okay, sure, whatever, I get what I get. But if it's something that I've known has been out for a while, I'm just like, I'm gonna want that good stuff. But again, Crunchyroll is kind of like I want to say robber barons. I want who are those people who like did a whole bunch of illegal shit and then somehow got rich off of it like legally later? I can't think of a term. Uh, I mean, that's kind of like if you're talking about the the industrial robber barons. Yes, no, yeah, that's, robber baron. It is robber baron. Okay, <laughs> they remember, they are the one place setting the trends in in this in like the simulcast business, so they can get well, away yeah. with a lot of stuff because well, there's that's, nobody else. Okay. Well, that's the thing. Crunchyroll originally was a website for people to host like their legal fucking downloads of anime and shit. And then they just they went legal like what was it like six years ago? I can't remember. Then they like you know removed all their pirated content, started tra- started gobbling up as many licenses as they can, and then started charging a streaming service for it. So it's like a little legit you know robber baron story that Crunchyroll did. So I'm a little bit so they're probably like. I said, because they're not an old company, like, officially. It's only, like, six, like not even a decade. Actually, I'm curious. Hang yeah. on here. Crunchyroll no, Control history. Hasn't been doing this one. I mean, they definitely promoted some competitive aspects into the... Like, um, I'm pretty sure Cr- Crunchyroll being big is what got Netflix off their butt to be like, oh, the anime industry specifically is profitable. Uh, but Netflix also has their own foibles. They're like, but we're not going to change how we Netflix do things just to suit anime fans we're just gonna turn anime into another profit revenue for us and we're netflix okay, and we make shitloads of money so we don't care if some of you hardcores can't wait for the show to actually be binge watchable yeah so yeah Crunchyroll started in 2006 which was a for-profit video upload and streaming site that specialized in east asian video content um and basically that's where everyone went to basically upload their fucking um fan subs and then mm-hmm. let's see here. 2008, they secured a, an investment of damn four million. What? Wow. Um. Let's see. And then 2009, they went legal with getting a deal with TV Tokyo. And from there, they just like started like building and building. Like, there's some business. There is some business minded fuckers like behind this. Yeah, there is. It's like, Which yeah, is, like I said. Amazing. That's What's like kind of amazing, they know what really, they're doing. Crunchyroll, it, like most things we take for granted nowadays, it, it only became popular relatively re- recently. Oh yeah, like it only became legitimate relatively recently, <laughs> like within the past decade, barely. Oh, yeah, that. no, like literally two thousand two thousand nine, it became a legit company, right? And it started in two thousand six. So for three years, they were basically operating in the gray, if not straight up in the. They black. basically made enough money. Made up enough money, went legit, and just sat back and started raking it in. Now that's a that's a modern dot com st- era story. Hey, we made a website where we do something that's technically illegal, but we got enough eyes and profitability on it that we can turn it into a legit business venture. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's. But yeah, no, that's... like I don't, I don't want to like shame on Crunchyroll. Like they're they're obviously they're successful at what they do. I kind of wish there was a little bit more competition, so maybe they'd polish up a little. Yeah, also, thing, huh? I don't like some of their rhetoric that I've seen. Like, they're, I think a lot of a lot of companies in this type of business do this, where they're like, "If you're not watching Crunchyroll, you're killing the anime industry." They say you that? know, what? kind of stuff. Like, okay, no. Uh, maybe you're disincentivizing licensors from making official licenses in the U.S., but no, the anime industry starts in Japan unless Netflix uh, gives them money to make exclusive series, in which case. Yeah, but that's running off Netflix profits, so yeah. that's not related to you, Crunchyroll. Like yeah, it's it's like, funny. Amazon like Prime I know Crunchyroll has it. a couple of original animation projects, but they're all stateside, right? I think so because I remember I think Crunchyroll Crunchyroll funded Shelter, which was the Porter Robinson collab. Uh, I can't think of any others off the top of my head. Yeah, fun, uh, somebody pointed out in chat, Funimation's doing the Disney thing where basically they're like, we have a big enough library on our own that we can just split, go split season, do our own service, which is annoying, but at the same time, Funimation is a really big name in the industry, and they do actually have the catalog for it, if they will do, um, I mean... Said, that and, mostly means, like, the dubs are leaving, and I, from what yeah. I can tell, Crunchyroll is partner with a collective called Verve, which has a whole bunch of different... Yeah series on it like honestly for kind of annoys me that's mostly because some some people have um taken it as an excuse to be lazy and not 
put stuff out on the PS4 because, oh, you can just get Verve. I'm like, no, fuck you. I Verve ain't on the PS4. Fuck you. I mean, it is. Crunchyroll is, though. That's all I need. But yeah. But um, apparently this they're, um, the new one that they're adding into it, High Dive, apparently that has a bunch of dubbed anime on it. So I have heard of High Dive like, before, but I'm not familiar with what, they, what they're... Um, yeah, me neither. But apparently they have a bunch of dubbed anime. So some people are saying, like, oh, no, they're not related. I bet they're fucking related. So whatever. But so hey everybody, remember Daisuke? <laughs> that was a fun streaming service that I actually don't even really remember what they even put on there. I that don't even know. still around? I, what? I don't even know what that is. I've heard <laughs> they that were at, name. I remember Anaplex of USA. Uh, Anaplex USA, our, our good friends uh, that Albert works with. Uh, they were promoting Daisuke in like the mid 2010s. Um, as like this big new streaming service with exclusive Anaplex content on it, and I haven't heard about it in the past few years. So that's because it was terminated on October thirty first, two thousand seventeen. It is yeah, been dead that a explains year. that Rip. it couldn't <laughs> compete. Uh, I mean, I, I'm looking at I'm looking at the list of this of the six studios who jumped in. Uh, that should have worked. Toei Animation, Anaplex, Sunrise, TMS Entertainment, Nihon Ad Systems, uh, and Densu. Like, Anaplex, Sunrise, yeah, Toei, like, those are all big fucking names. They should have been able to make that work. I yeah. think the problem was Crunchyroll was too well-established and had yeah. too many shows under its own belt. Yeah, yeah. that's I mean, that's the, the real point? problem is once mm-hmm. once somebody gets set in their ways, you gotta, you gotta really shake them out. It's like, uh, it's like Steam, like, uh, uh like, um, proprietary alternatives to Steam suck butts. Um, like, um, U- Ubisoft's thing, EA's Origin. thing, those, those stuff all suck. Why bother when you can just get Steam? Because Steam's great. Everybody loves Steam. Steam even sells porn games now. Steam's the best. I'm okay with this. Um, Anaplex, um, Fate Stay Night, US release, gimme. Uh-huh. Well, I know, um, but... Albert specifically talked about, uh, that, about, like, because Japan, it's available as a, as a mobile download. And you can get Fate, the Fate story, for free, and then you buy the other two routes. Um, that would be great here. Actually, this needs. This reminds me because I totally pre-ordered the Heaven's Feel movie. I need to re-check when that's coming out because I got the the fully dressed up package. So hang on, I need to double check that. When is that coming out? Blu-ray. Dear audience, we like anime. We fucking love anime. I. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which. Omega, have you finally been catching up on the damn animes? I know you're watching Slime. Yes, I have started to catch up on anime. Um, I am current with um, Goblin Slayer and Slime. I managed to catch those two up, and I started Zombieland Saga. Okay. Sli- I, have not, uh, I have not worked my way through all the stuff you recommended, but I'm starting. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, and we even we chatted for a long time about Slime the other day when I watched it. Okay, it's released on the 20th, so I should have it by Thanksgiving, hopefully. Happy Thanksgiving to me! I wonder if I can I... get away... I probably can't get away with this using this screen grab in the show. Yeah. As a, I don't know, we're still trying to figure out the whole monetization bullshit, and, you know... YouTube's kind of being a button letting us contact them. Yeah. But... Listen, it's not... According to YouTube, it's not a big deal how big you are. It's totally a big deal how, how big totally you are. It's totally a big deal. Fuck you. They... I mean, I'm sure they're right in that they don't necessarily pick on anybody just because they're a small channel or they're an infrequent uploader. But if you're not a frequent uploader in a big channel, then, yeah, they don't care about you. <sighs> Slate one. So we'll big keep news. trucking. That's one, we'll I, keep I did this whole big speech last time, though. It is a new month, so it's a good time to remind everybody, hey, Patreon's a thing. We just went through it. Uh, you know, we uh, you know, we got a, a slightly active group of, of patrons who come to us and you know, they listen to the live shows, they support us, they get audio downloads. Uh, I did a whole special thing for Halloween where I <laughs> read choice selections from my big book, Oh, H.P. Lovecraft, The Complete Cthulhu Mythos. Uh, and I read a lot of those stories and I've been posting them every day of the week to the channel. That's done for now. Which is good because I think I've read all the stories you can actually read in a short format because they're like, you know, 10, maybe 20-ish pages, whereas um, all the big stuff, like you want to read The Call of Cthulhu, The Color Out of Space, uh, The Dumb Witch Horror, Shadow Over Innsmouth, Mountains of Madness, those are all like 40-plus pages, so I'm pretty sure that would be like an hour or two. 
Ain't no one got time for that. Uh, well, yeah, obviously, I've, I'm looking at the analytics. Like, the first couple episodes that are, like, 10, 15 minutes, those got a decent chunk of views. Once I started posting, like, 30-minute ones, like, half the views. Heck. Uh, but, yes, if you are a $1 patron, those are available as audio downloads with um, metadata tags and everything. Uh, hmm. So, yeah, you can, you know, if you want to listen on the go. I'm thinking uh, we're, we're, st- we're still piloting through working out Lucky Rants. I'm thinking maybe we'll release... Just the the pure audio format of that is a little download for patrons. Yeah, I don't know. that would be appropriate. I'm still apprehensive about this. It's fine. You'll be fine. Listen, Lucky. I just if you add them all up, I did uh, you know a couple hours worth of basically audiobook recordings this week. You'll be fine. All right, fine, whatever. But I'm gonna turn this back to anime. Um, let's uh, talk about the most controversial controversial one. I can do English totally. Um, Goblin Slayer, now that we have gotten a pay- past fucking, um, everyone being so angst and edgy, and we actually have characters, and, you know, talking, and maybe a bit of development, even. So, we passed the, we passed the three episode build up, which, honestly, it's what it was. First episode, you have the shocker, you have the hook, you have the hook. Second one, they, they established some story, set some things up. Third one, they finally introduced the fucking party. Mm-hmm. Now we're on week four. They actually went out and did some cool shit. Yeah. It, the, the the basic first three, fun. they established the stakes in the universe. They establish, And then two and three basically established the characters and the big plot. Yeah. Uh, also, and, important to point out, starting with episode three, it's weird, but they've started doing, not the whole thing, but they've started doing slices of that little intro talking about the gods literally playing dice games yeah. with lots of lovingly animated rolling dice on screen. Not yeah. the full thing yet, but so just little people... snippets at the front to kind of build up the mystique of the universe. Yeah. And so I'm, I kind of feel like it's maybe might have been too late, but you know, whatever. It's there. Better late than never, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of at the same mind. I think I've, I think it would have been a little better to at retaining an audience if they started with that. So you'd have that initial buy in. Um, but you know I, what they should have done? Here's my, here's, here's my go for input it. on this. They should have, like, cause episode one is such a clear, concise, well-constructed, self-contained story that introduces you just to the atmosphere of the world mm-hmm. and the tension building and such like that. It's very well done. And so that's why I'm like, but they should have done right at the start of episode two, then do this massive exposition dump about the world. Um, yeah, that would be fair. Cause like I can... Yeah, because yeah, the I can see, I can see that. also I I feel like especially from the manga, but Goblin Slayer's got kind of a reputation as being a bit of a shocker. Like I, so I feel like yeah, and you're right. The first is so perfectly well contained. It's like, oh, Herpadu, we're just gonna go with it. Oh fuck no. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, it's all wrong. It's bad. Oh god. Like and it's and it's it's I think got that perfect arc to it. Um, so yeah, if they, if they dump the full thing, but I guess they don't want to, so, eh. Maybe they're concerned about losing people who already know the story? I don't know. Like, there's a lot of questions to ask about adaptations, like, who's this aimed at? What, what's this for? I think the pacing of the anime is a little weird, but so far it's good. Yeah. Um, as I just got, I just finally got all of, um, three of the, well, not all three, but I got the first three of the Goblin Slayer light novel um remember everyone you can go to yen press they actually have like a full-on list of things that are coming out soon so like go check to see if something's what you want on there but um yeah uh oh god i totally lost where i was going with that but as oh i remember now i'm like mostly i'm okay with like how they're adapting the story I said, yeah, they're switching up things here. The thing I still can't get over is fucking CG Goblin Sayer. Yeah, I know. That's that's still weird to me. It's that like so only funny. in group shots from a distance, and I'm like, he stands out so much. It's like, why? Why are you doing like, that? I'll fight, like, I'll fight so you weird. voice on Gridman CG, because I think it's amazing. But I look at, like, Goblin Slayer CG, I'm all like, this this makes no sense. It's not as bad as Zombieland Saga CG. <laughs> oh, my God. Zombieland, well, Zombieland Saga has its own niche of just being ridiculously and entertaining. So but, I'm, yeah, no, that's not an excuse because the 2D is so goddamn good. It is like you know they could have easily just cut it in a way because also the show is very well directed. So oh, yeah. it could have easily cut in a way that made there to be no 
no point, basically, in having these wide group dancing shots. Because it'd be one thing <laughs> if it was just episode three, like, okay, this is a parody show, so they're just doing it to parody, right? But they yeah. do it again in episode four, and I'm like, what the fuck is the point? God, I don't, how is I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's always questions like this when you want to know why the fuck something is happening, and we'll never know, because you have to be, like, in the studio, like, two weeks ago, <laughs> um, before the episode comes out, or more, and they're like, uh, okay, so this episode has to go to print, you know, we've got to send it to the, to the network in, like, 12 hours. Well, you know, everybody's dead over here, we haven't finished the, just fucking CG it, turn on the render machines, crank them all the way up, <laughs> we'll suppose, get it done enough at time. At least with MAPPA, I can believe it. Because yeah. this is a whole brand, this is a brand new IP, it's not, there's a manga, but it's it came out after the show aired, yep. so... Muscle's usually really pretty cool. good, too, uh, if I remember correctly. It's, yeah, it's, it's really solid. Actually, I was starting to wane because of the fact that it was starting to become like a normal idol show, but episode five brought me back. Episode five, I'm like, okay. I mean, we're still kind of three for five here on good episodes, but I mean, because episode three and four just kind of, they're okay. They, they, they do their job. But yeah. I mean, it, it didn't have as much of the funnies as ep- episode two was a really fucking high benchmark, okay? You gotta admit that. Yeah, brand. I'm two in. <laughs> I, um, I watched one and two basically last night, and I'm ready to watch more, but I didn't have time yet. Right. Recording a show. Oh, but yeah, oh, so I'm, I'm like two in, and I'm like, oh, I mean, I said in chat, literally, I started, I'm like, uh, guys, everyone, I'd like to let you know, I started watching Zabulon Saga, I'm dead, I'm absolutely dead, because that's how it was. <laughs> the show instantly killed me. Just I mean, perfect. I, just, like, I wanted, like, that's why I was like, you have to watch it. By the way, uh, MAPPA is doing a second season of Kakaguri. Called Kakaguri X. Yes! Uh, yes! It's gonna be 2000, Finally. 2019. Ah, oh, fuck. That means I gotta wait for forever, though, because it's Netflix. Shit. God damn it, Netflix. Yeah, I actually remember if I, if I remember, I watched Kakaguri online via Witchcraft. So. I like, yeah, I waited I'll, for I'll say out. this. I like MAPPA a lot because they're basically. Uh, I'm gonna be controversial here. I say they're a better trigger because they feel more like they do whatever they want. It is true. Like. They did, like, um, because they did Terran Resonance. That was fucking crazy. They did The Rage of Bahamut, both of them, which were well animated. You can say what you want about the story, but goddamn, they were Well, crazy. yeah, the that's because I, we talked about this before. I, I don't think we've ever said it on air, but we talked about it because I watched a little of the first one of those before I got kind of bored. But I watched it because the detail was so high. Um, That, that was for a mobile game, Rage of Bahamut. And yep. the mobile game I studio basically game. gave the anime studio a blank check. Yep. They wanted them to do the anime adaptation. They're like, okay, how much money do we have? And they were like, how much money do you need? <laughs> and so the the animation is beautiful because literally, the, it's a mobile game. It was making shitloads of money, and they were like, ah, oh, fuck, whatever. Yeah, but to go on with Mappa, like just to see how like how fucking crazy they go, they did fucking Inuyashiki, which was um basically an adaptation of a manga who by the same guy who made fucking Gantz, and it was just like full CG. So I'm just like, it wasn't. It wasn't great CG, I won't lie, but it but it wasn't like fucking piss poor CG either. It was like in that middle road. They did all the fucking Garo, um, which either you know Garo or you don't. I'm not even. They know, they did. Here's some more. They did Zankyo no Terror, which yeah is, yeah that's Terror which Resonance. is uh, related to uh, Shinichiro Watanabe. You might have heard of him. <laughs> yep. But they also did uh, Sakamichi no Apollon, which is like a J drama. You know, like, it, it's just a pure drama slice of life story. It's it's really kind of riveting. Uh, they did Punchline, which is, God, God. that is a coked out show. That um, is an amazing show. Like, there were so many <laughs> twists in it. It's like, But oh. I can also see maybe why people maybe might t- not take to them as much as Trigger, because Trigger has a clearer identity, because they're always making the same goddamn characters in every show. Oh, yeah, but they, at the same tri- time, Trigger like, firmly established that they have themes... And they yeah, have themes right. that people like, and they're like, well, fuck, we can, we can work with this. But the problem well, is, I forget, always... Forget, I Mappa, Mappa also did Yuri on Ice, just yes. like, more like whatever the fuck God we want to do. damn Yuri on Ice. <laughs> so I guess the question is, what's, what's Mappa's like, financial backing? Because cl- clearly they've, they've scored some big hits. Trigger always, to me, feels like they're on like the razor's edge, right? Like They're making really good stuff, but at the same time, they, like, they have a Patreon, the they had that. a Kickstarter... Like, they... T- Trigger always seems like they're a little hard up for funding for their next big project, which is why maybe they do some stuff, like, with partnerships and, and stuff that's not as standout, because they need to sell some shit. 
guys, I have the answer. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, but uh, tr- the problem is Trigger was involved with Gynax, which oh, was yeah. always on the edge. You know, they were profitable at one point, but especially in recent years, they kind of didn't have as much money. That's very clear uh, based on their showings, especially within very recent years, which you barely noticed them for anyway. Um, so I'm sure they didn't have a lot of money to go off of, but they yeah. wanted to do what they wanted to do. Uh, that's why they split off in the first place. But MAPPA is founded by one of the co-founders of Madhouse. Oh. This guy knows people. He knows yeah. everyone. Why else do you think he's going to be able to make whatever he wants? Ah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's always an interesting... Like, we have the same like, thing in Hollywood, the right? Like, you can... <laughs> you see new studios or directors pop up, and you're like, okay, so uh, this guy's got who guy and what guy? Uh, like video games Mappa, like is that a, too. Mappa is an ac- as an acronym for Marayama Animation Produce Project Association. Mm-hmm. The, the founder's name is Masayao Maru- Maruyama. It's named mm-hmm. after him. Yeah. <laughs> He's also very popular at Otakon because he goes like every single year. Ooh. Well, they have. Let's see here. Let me look at some stats here. Uh, let's see. They're founded seven years ago. Uh, let's see here. They have a staff of eighty. I don't know if that's big or small for an animation company. No idea. I don't actually, no. Anyway, but yeah, this guy is very good at making connections. Like people in the West love him. People over in Japan love him. He he knows so many people. But these guys at Trigger, they're just yeah, they're they're going by the seat of their pants. They're just kind of like Whoa. now I, they, they, they have had like children by comparison. They have had like great success connecting to a Western audience. Like they've, I mean, they what's their Patreon up to? Uh, Lucky, do you know? Uh, I know you're a patron of them. My hand, but let me go check. Granted, I'm not saying they're unsuccessful. No, but, but I'm just, it yeah. It's just they have is... they have a different type of like resonance. Oh, with people. buddy, they are up to yeah. nine thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars per month. Right. Yeah. So they're they're not like top t- tips on Patreon either. Uh, but they they have as a purely Western thing. Patreon is like because I think Japan has its own like Patreon version. Uh, but there that's definitely some resonance with the West, right? Which is I just remember interesting for them. Is... This just this just occurred to me. Um, Trigger like when they do their um, they do their, their drawing streams. They um, you say they only do um, requests from Trigger Animations. Now that Gritman is out, we can request a uh, Rika and fucking Akane, and I am down to clown with that. Actually, boys, did you ever try Gritman yet? I tried the first episode a long time ago. I think I told you this. Yeah, it's I know you got in... pissed. I tried the whole thing too. I tried the whole first episode, and I was. I, it wasn't that I was confused. It just felt like there was something missing the whole time. I'm like, in terms of story, I was like, not, not, oh, there's a mystery. No, I'm saying, like, things just kind of happened in that in that first episode. Like, like honestly, okay. like, what, what I equate that to is that you're missing the nostalgia factor, honestly. I guess. I mean, like, people in I, Japan seem to love it. Yeah, But over here in the West, I've noticed it's gotten a really low mark on a lot of websites where, like, people just don't seem to get it or they just don't like it. One or the other. Yeah, because, like, I've mentioned this before, like, um, Gridman's actually, like, this reimagining of a super old show called, like, Gridman the Hyper Agent. Right. And it was one of those shows that the U.S. got their hands on, like, some of the episodes and, you know, just cut them up, throw in some some 90s teenagers. <laughs> and yeah. fucking, I mean, we, called, we, uh, talk, we were talking about the, the errors of, of, of anime adaptation earlier. Yeah, that was, that was a very clear er- era when you got shit yeah. like, um... Robotech, Voltron. Yeah. Right. All that stuff. And I remember watching that as a kid and being all like, oh, yeah, this is real cool. Because, like, honestly, like, I was watching that when I was, like, six, seven years old and thought that was, like, the coolest fucking shit. Like, these kids, like, jump into a computer. One turns into a giant fighting robot. The other one turns into the equipment and they punch fucking kaijus that this one dude is making and sends into a computer. That's fucking 90 as fuck right there. Right. Yeah, and so you know, seeing that now, yeah, that probably inflates my that's like inflates it, because yeah, I think I said this last time when I said this, like I watched it literally a third for the girls because god damn it, they are, they are thick and curvy and I love it. A third because you know I'm actually interested, and a third because it's just fucking nostalgia. Like I remember this stuff and it takes me back to a time when I would like kill myself on sugary cereal on Saturday morning. But lucky, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here for a second. I'm listening. You know how, we know, in fact, all of us here should know that Trigger is very, as you pointed out, very resonant in the West in their own way. Yeah. But most people in the West have no fucking clue what you're talking about. 
like j- the Japanese people might know. So maybe this is their target. Like they're trying to get the, like Japan on their side now. No. But that's I also a problem because like Trigger is known to do like one show a season at like at right because they don't, they don't have the, they don't have the budget or the the time to do more than one. Mm. And I know they want to do whatever they want to do, but I think that might be why they're always on the razor's edge because they're not planning like with bigger audiences in mind or like planning the stuff out ahead of time. They're just like they're planning out the minimum of what they need to to make a show happen. Well, and yes, that seems to be it. <laughs> I, I wonder, like, like honestly, do they actually like make things considering like like foreign audience audiences? Like, really? Like, I said, like, I mean, I would think Trigger would because they have a Patreon and they constantly are sending people to go to all these anime conventions. It's not just Expo. I see them all over the place over here. So they really. clearly recognize this Western audience. I mean, they had a huge following for it, especially with like Kill a Kill and such. Oh yeah, and, like no, Darling Kill a Kill saving anime. Uh, it was a big deal so when just, somebody like, announced they were going to dub Kill a Kill, and then nobody cared. That's true, yeah. <laughs> I, I, listen, I was big into the Kill a Kill following when it was coming out. That 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 announcement basically peaked really high and then crashed. Right. Everybody's like, oh my god, are they yeah, actually going to try and dub this crazy? I barely registered that the dub even happened, honestly. Yeah, no. Uh, same thing with the Madoka dub. That's the problem with uh, with Aniplex USA in general. Like, not just... We, we, we like to rag on them for fake grand order, but... When it comes to their dubs, like I don't think anyone gives a shit. It's probably Nobody because the actual the one. It's probably because the like, actual staff at, like we said about at Adflex US is fucking tiny. That's like yeah. Lucky just said that yeah. there were, that Mappa Studio was like eighty permanent employees. I think the, the if you looked that number up on Adflex US, it was like twelve or something. Like yeah. now, the, granted, their actual permanent employee buying, base is super small. People are clearly oh, buying the me. DVDs and Blu-rays because they're still keeping them at those high prices, and they're still around. They haven't become Pony Canyon yet. So clearly, like, they are, things are working out. They're a big deal at, like, conventions and stuff like that. Uh, maybe not as equal to Funimation, but they're still a big deal, uh, even to this day. And so I'm like, it's working, but I think it's only because people want to buy the anime... They don't give a shit about these dubs because they're not promoted enough. So I don't right. even think half the people buying them even know they're on the fucking Blu-ray. Yeah, no, they probably people. Well, I mean, honestly, that's always a big deal with anime. Is do you give a fuck about the dub or not? Um, like ninety percent of the time, I don't. I'm gonna be real. Like I, I was uh one of those kids. Uh, we're gonna talk about YouTube being uh not legit. Uh, all right, here's here's a way back for some of you. Does any anybody remember? Well, both hosts and in the audience, remember the Wild West days of YouTube when you could watch Naruto and Bleach fan subs ten minutes at a time. Yeah, I do. yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, guys, that's, that's how I got into that's how quick, I got into guys. subs uh, guys. because I was watching Adult Swim and I was like, this show is entertaining enough that I can't wait another week for you to play the dub for me, Adult Swim. And I would, yeah, you so know, I'm and you could go you on YouTube quick. and you could watch. Uh, uh, I remember DB Tetebayo was a really uh big Naruto and Bleach sub, and you could watch the entire backlog, which was months in advance. And I did that for lots and lots of shows. And some shows nobody gave a fuck about. Like um, I had to wait for all of um Blood Plus to be dubbed because nobody cared enough about that show <laughs> to to actually <laughs> just, to one, post that was, all the yeah, fans that was also like a fifty episode show. Jesus, yeah, something like that. Okay, for the third time, I'm gonna interrupt you guys here for a second because I looked it up here. As of 2000, like, um, these numbers are from, uh, 2017, but Anaplex of America has three employees. Bullshit. Now, I'm pretty sure that means full-time employees. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's not part-timers or contractors, which is probably how they do most of their business over here, is they do contract work with people. But, yeah, I mean, no. even their, even their dub casts are all part of Bang Zoom, not Aniplex, because they don't have an in-house dubbing studio like Funimation does. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because, okay. yeah, Funimation was doing, doing their thing long enough that they actually built up enough, like, cachet and, and money that it they're now... It just became more convenient for them to have an in-house dubbing studio. Yeah. And now, and now, you know, Texas is a big Texas has turned into a big anime center, oddly enough. It's weird, but Oh, hey, I is. found a phone number. I could just fucking call them. Yeah? <laughs> what are you going to call them about? It's like, hey, how many employees do you guys have? We're doing research for a podcast. I wonder if they would podcast. actually answer that. I'm curious. You want me to? You want me to? I mean, go ahead. Sure. Hang on. Hang on. Let me, let me pull out my phone here. 
All right, folks, you heard it here f- first. Lucky is literally going to dial Anaplex US and ask if how many employees If he actually gets to the HR department and gets a number, that's going to be awesome. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, let's see here. Phone call. Oh, wait, no, I need that. Uh. Okay, oh, so but yeah, so that's number. it's very interesting how Texas kind of turned around because like um, Funimation's there, um, Rooster Teeth is there. Obviously, if you don't know much about them, but they're uh, they're obviously a pretty big name in internet video with Red versus Blue going for years. Um, they make Ruby, which has it's weird. It's so Ruby's so fucking huge in Japan. Hey, I just have a I just have a quick question. Um, how many employees do you have? You employ full time. Excuse me? Oh, I just had uh, questions about your company. Oh, you prefer not to answer? Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Man, they just shut me down quick. <laughs> uh, but hey, okay. at least you had a conversation with them. You tried. I tried. All right. Oh, but yeah, as I was just saying, um, it's it's kind of funny how Texas is kind of a, uh, a little bit of like an a slice of the anime culture. They've got um, uh, like Funimation down there, Rooster Teeth. They also have several conventions down yeah, there. Yeah, a couple of conventions. Them, um, which is Team Four Stars enough. down there. They're not huge yet, but they are now a legit dub company because they actually did a dub. They're doing original animations now. It's not just Fun fact. Uh, uh, Acon, bridged. which was formerly known as Project Acon, is actually the oldest and one of the most well-known uh, anime conventions in U.S. In fact, in North American history. Yeah, and it's in Texas. It's always been in Texas, of all places. It's funny how that works out. But yeah, animes. Always a big weird thing. You know, you reminded me, Voice, though, talking about, like, connections earlier. It, it reminds me, um, I don't know, I know Lucky does, but I don't know how many people in the audience follow, like, Hideo Kojima on Twitter. Um, we've <laughs> yeah. talked about this before. <laughs> Kojima's Twitter is literally nothing but him going places and meeting people. That's yeah, all he, he tweets that, about. That, Valve, like, um, week, that and what movies and music he's buying. That's it. He, he buys movies and he posts pictures of the Blu-rays he's bought, or when he went to go see in the theaters, and then he posts pictures... Of like, yeah, he went to Pixar recently and Valve. There's a picture of him like hanging out with Gabe. It's like, yeah, no, it's just like that's that's connections. That guy getting loose from Konami really freed up that guy. Mm-hmm. Which good for him. Yeah, good for great him. for him. Uh, and and I, it feels like Sony has definitely cut him a, a bit of a blank check in the networking department to just get mm-hmm. out there because they don't seem to it. care. Yeah. It's great for them. Hey. Oh. Whatever, you're fucking hitting the coach, but whatever you make is going to sell a shitload of copies, so go for it, buddy. He's like, I like to think of him as like the Quentin Tarantino of video games. He would probably yeah. love that com- that comparison, actually. Because <laughs> he is a I just looked up, huge like, just, movie dude. Like, So I just looked up real quick because I was curious, like the 12 largest North American anime conventions, like as of last year. Like some of these, I have no idea where the fuck they are, but some of them, you know, it's just, yeah, it's because you have Anime Expo. Which had over a hundred thousand um, participants last year, and I was, and there. They... <laughs> you were there. You had a panel. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. A, a surprisingly and... successful panel. God damn it! Nobody uh, left. <laughs> wow, great. Lucky. Now um, we need to have a wildly successful panel. Uh, no, I'm not. Well, I could, but I have no idea what I'd talk about. No, you'd ha- we'd have to get me somewhere probably, uh, which would be great. Uh, uh, I can't do that alone. I'd die. <laughs> yeah. So, number two is Anime Matsuri. Don't know where that is, but they had... Oh, like, here's, uh, here's, that is in Ohio, I want to say. You know, here's a quick... Now, here's a crazy thing. So, Anime Expo was at, like, over 100,000. Number two is at 36,000. Like, yeah, you know, like, it's kind of weird, really. It's like a huge fucking drop. And then Akon's at 33,000. Oh, Anime, Anime Matsuri Mo- is, um, uh, Houston. I'm looking at it right now, their website. I'll link it in the patron chat. Like I said, I want to say Ohio. I could be wrong. I've never actually been actually. No, it's in Texas. Yeah, no, it's also in. Yeah, Whoa. Houston. Wow. So they got two. Let's see here. Then there's Anime North, which was at thirty two thousand. That one's in Canada. Yep. Yep. That one's in Canada. Um, Anime Week in Atlanta or AWA. That one was thirty one thousand. That one's which in Atlanta. Is, yeah. Atlanta. Honestly, Anime Central was at thirty thousand. That's that in Chicago. Yep. 
Jason. Anime Boston. Oh, I wonder where that one's at. <laughs> yeah, gee, I wonder. <laughs> is at um twenty five hundred. I mean twenty five thousand. Excuse me. Number eight is uh, MyCon, um, SakuraCon, which is uh, approximately twenty five thousand. And close which, to you, Lucky. Yeah, and close to me. So yeah, that one's in Seattle, Washington. Then there's um, Autocon, which is in Washington D.C. Um, Formerly Baltimore. I missed that location. Yeah. Yomacon, which is in Detroit, Michigan, that was at twenty two thousand. A talkathon. How many Ubers is that right now? Uh, a talkathon is um, in in Montreal, Quebec. That's it's, one of my favorite cons. Really? Which yeah. is a uh, twenty two thousand. And then anime New York City, approximately twenty thousand, which is guess what? New York City. And they actually just started up last year. Yeah. Nice. Incredible. Wow. I well, I mean, I, I guess we didn't hear any other top contenders in New York specifically. Um, no, and actually, here's an important story, thing, because uh, I know we have lots of international a, uh, listeners. Um, New York's always had a really troubled past um, with getting anime conventions. If you've ever heard of, like, Big Apple Anime Con, I think it's called, that was actually Central Park Media's attempt to make an anime convention. Back when they were a company, that was in the early 2000s, and even that, that did not succeed, because, well, Central Park Media was kind of trash, but also... Um, that we could talk about the anime booms and busts. That alone is a super yeah. awesome what's up topic, just in case you want uh, to. But also, I do, I do want to say, if people don't get that, like, if you're, because I know we have a decent amount of international listeners. We have a lot of, like, English-speaking listeners who are in, like, um, uh, I know we have a couple people in the Philippines, you know, and some people in Europe. Um, America's big. It's really fucking big here. Um, I live in central Florida. If I wanted to, say, drive to AWA which is the closest of those to where I live, that would be a couple of days, probably, minimum driving. Um, and yeah. it's the same for lots of other places. Like, it's it's a big deal to go out of state. Um, and obviously you can fly, but then you have to pay airfare, you have to pay hotels and stuff on the other end. Like, it's if you don't have something near you, it can be kind of a big deal because that means you have to go out of your way. It's like, it's not too bad to go out of the way because, like, we have trains and stuff. Like, honestly, like, if I wanted to go to Anime Expo, I could literally pop on to the mm-hmm. fucking Greyhound, right? The fucking Pacific Starlight down, be there in like a day. Yeah, but it's it's still know. you add like an extra day of just travel time. Yeah, yeah. It's literally not like some places over in the EU where you're like, oh, I'm gonna go pop over to another country for lunch and be back in an hour. It's like, what? yeah, or you can like lit- literally you can take a train to an island in Europe. You can go through the channel and pop out, pop out in England from France. And then come back in the same. I day. am internally it's laughing pretty, at big because that one's pretty big. But I don't know if it's that big. Like, I mean, I've done. This is the guy who's done a ton of fucking traveling when it comes to specifically anime conventions. So I'm, I kind of know this stuff personally because I, I've done it all. But um, <laughs> I'm not even bragging. I've done way too much. I can literally take a photo of my fucking wall of my fucking like fifty fucking badges of all the cons I've been to. I wish <laughs> I kept all my crap. badges. <laughs> but uh. But yeah, it's 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 not that bad. It does take at probably around a few hours though, um, depending on where you're at. Like you were talking about Central Florida to yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. I'd say that that's probably going to take up a huge chunk of your day for yeah. sure, at least. Well, also how you having having done basically half that run, because if you want to get to anywhere, you basically have to cut up through Atlanta anyway. So oh yeah, it's it's it takes longer than you'd like. Um, right. Also, uh, let me tell you, traffic in Atlanta is god awful. Yes, because Atlanta is a very big city. It's huge, <laughs> and, and a lot um, of there. fun fact: it doesn't matter how big your roads are, you still develop traffic. Mm-hmm. This is why I like. Um, I don't Soccer actually Con because they finally moved. They moved it a few years back to the um, to the Seattle Convention Center, mm-hmm. which is literally just like a couple turns off the interstate. So I don't yes, actually drive there. I just good. have my that's friend. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I just have my friend drive me there. He takes a couple turns off the interstate. I jump out. I'm good to go. Yeah, because here's the great thing: like, I live close enough that I can just make a day drive there, and at the end of it, I can just go the fuck home. Yeah, like, and honestly, that's... if you actually live in a big city where a convention is, then it's way easier. Um, because like I've visited LA before. Um, I don't really remember what driving was like there because I didn't really drive around while I was there. I was with friends, and we walked everywhere, or we took the bus, which was just yeah, okay. Way easier. Uh, public public transit's great, everybody. You should want more of it. 
I wish. I would love to get rid of my fucking car. God, this thing sucks up so much money. Yeah, you were... Was that this week you were yelling about your car again? I think it was. I, I yell about a lot of things. You, a lot of you yell about your car a lot, which is a sign. It's like, also, honestly, yes, if um, I one, of our, one of our car... patrons, um, Qua, is saying they live in Texas and it's a pain in the ass to get across. I've heard that, yes. I By the way, when I went to L.A., I, I flew, anymore. which was way easier than driving. That was like, it's four hours. Uh, f- flying to places is way easier. It's just that means you have to deal with the fact that you got to go through airports, which can be another kind of pain in the butt. Though I haven't I've been to an airport in the past in the couple airports. of years, so I don't, I don't know how good we're doing lately. I've flown, like, a lot in my life, and you know, if you know what's bad is when you get used to, like, spending a night in an airport because your flight is, like, super early in the morning and no one can get you there, so you just go crash at the airport at night, and you mm. sleep in the church or just on a bench. It's, like, it's mm. magical in its own creepy kind of way. Yeah, <laughs> airline travel, look, airline travel in general is its own kind of magic. Yeah. Uh, catching over overnight oh, flights man, across remember. the ocean. Oh, what was it called? It was um, Japan Expo USA. You probably have never heard of it because it only lasted three years. Huh. I had to go to uh, San Jose, California, and I had to take uh, five different planes because I ended oh up missing God. two of them because two of them were so uh, back-to-back. I couldn't huh. reach them in time because of slight delays. So yeah, five different planes all in one day, and by the end of the night, I did actually make it to San Jose and my hotel room. That That's was amazing. an adventure. Yeah, no, I've like, done, I remember I've done, like when I, I when I was almost on, always like, when air travel is booked for me or I book it, it's it's you know straight through one way. Uh, but I've done connecting flights a couple of times. That is always a great big anxiety moment. Oh, oh man! No, once I almost missed the flight, the other I was um I was going from Norfolk, Virginia, to O'Hare, then to Seattle. On my transfer flight, like the plane literally was about to leave, so I am literally like running through this airport. I airport, I have no idea where the fuck I'm at. I'm just trying to get to this gate. It's like a scene out of a fucking romance movie. It's like, no, I have to make the plane, and I made I it. I have to, the to make it. I need to tell her. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> And it's just like, they like, <laughs> I made it to the ticket and they're looking at me like out of breath, like carrying my carry on. It's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm trying to get on the fucking plane. Oh, that reminds me of, yeah, my, my, particularly my flight from Chicago to, uh, I think it was Dallas. Oh God. Yeah. I, I had to run and I still didn't make it. Oh. Luckily, United took pity on me several times and was like, here's a, here's a new ticket for free. I'm like, oh, thank you, United. United, like, I've never, I don't think I've ever gone wrong with United. I've gone wrong with several other airplanes, but I think United's always pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I've just watched the news. You'll see people going wrong with airlines every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's, we talked about, like, how, how some groups have, like, iron groups on the industry. Airlines really do have you by the balls. Yeah. And they know it. They, they've known but it for hey, decades. All these experiences have made me basically immune to air travel, like, in terms of the, the fear and the sickness oh, yeah. and whatever else. Oh, oh yeah, I have none great. of that. That's good. That's like, good. Give me, good like, stuff. <laughs> like just give me a good like give me a good long book and some music. I can't sleep on airplanes. I still can't sleep on airplanes. But I oh just yo yo yo! I actually even best of all on my trip. Uh, it was a direct flight from uh, Philadelphia to uh, to Los Angeles for Anime Expo uh, this past year, and um, I got to watch two movies while I was while I was there because of the in flight uh, setup they had. It's really cool on some of these planes they have. Mm-hmm. Where I got to I got to watch through all of. Um, the Tommy Wiseau documentary movie, or mockumentary, I guess you want to call it. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. And then immediately after, I watched all of Isle of Dogs, <laughs> which I also <laughs> loved. And I'm just like, oh my god, I got to sit through both of them. And right as Isle of Dogs ended, I was in Los Angeles. I was like, poo Oh, yeah, Perfect. no. <laughs> oh, man, next time I go flying, I'm going to like, I'm gonna be like really sorely tempted not to like swipe my fucking car through the screen to borrow like, all the games and shit. <laughs> Because that's one of those things. I've been, like, fucking flying since I was, like, six. Mm-hmm. And just, like, on times. And, you know, I never had money. So I just look at the screen and be like, what magical thing is this? And now that I am adult and I have disposable income, I really don't. But don't tell anyone I said that. Um, Most people don't do tell it. Lucky himself that because he doesn't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. I am so horrible with money. Uh, hey, you know what never gets old, though? The movie Airplane. <laughs> uh, yes. Don't call me Shirley. Love that movie. That's my. That's one of the few movies I have like on a hard disk or and and lying around. Um. So like whenever my internet is out in the middle of the night, 
which happens more often than you'd think. Um, that's that's what I. All right, I'm gonna lay in bed. I'm gonna throw airplane on my computer. I'm gonna watch, and just that's that's my relax and go to sleep movie because it's so good. Uh, because fun fact, here's how Omega goes to sleep every night. I turn on YouTube app on my PS4. I watch random YouTube videos for a couple hours, and I'm like, okay, I'm tired now. I sleep. Huh. Oh man, I was gonna mention something else about airlines. Oh, fucking voice. What's your plans for conventions this year or next year? I should say. Next year, um, I don't, well, I'm not going to say I don't have plans, only because, obviously, I'm going to have plans, but I kind of, uh, determine it based on a year-to-year basis, like, when the year actually starts, how I feel. Like, I obviously, I want to go back to, like, Anime Expo, though, because, you know, that, I had such a good time there with my panel and such, and I've been there a couple of years already. Actually, this is, I think, my third year that I just went, um, but, yeah, obviously, that that's become, like, a huge, uh base for me when it comes to all my convention experiences i usually go to anime boston because i generally enjoy that one too i like the location a lot i like the convention itself um didn't have as great a time this year but that was probably my fault um it wasn't bad it was just i i kind of wasted a lot of time there for some reason um but hopefully not this coming year and then uh well i mean later this year i still have to go to uh anime nyc in a few weeks um because I got my my S class ticket for that fake concert slash panel with all the with all the dub guests. Ooh, ooh. I am kind of jealous you get to go see Eimer. Yeah, that's pretty cool, and I get the signed CD. So, woo! Wow. Um, I'm looking at videos of Anime Expo 2017, and it's just like mm, these are a lot of girls showing up their butts. Yep. I'm okay yep. with this stuff. Well, that's every convention, really. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially the bigger it is. Because, yeah. hey, these girls, they want to get famous, you know, for one reason or another. Uh, soccer Grounds is my, usually my con, but I don't know, maybe I'll try and go to Anime Expo. I don't know. I mean, I or was thinking about go- going to, actually, funny enough, you mentioned that. I was thinking about uh, changing it up instead of Anime Boston going to Soccer Con one year. Because uh, I've been going to Anime Boston a lot, and on top of that, um, they happen on the same exact date, oftentimes. Oh, really? So. Oh, really? Yeah, it's always been like that for like most years. Uh, sometimes it wavers a little bit, but they're always so close. Uh, it, well, it it never works out. So, but hey, this time ever... I'm like, maybe I should change it. Hey, if you want to come up, I'll co-host the panel with you. Oh Somewhere. snap! I think that lucky be in courts. Welcome to Studio Courts. Studio Courts. It's yeah, because you're the studio without the Omega. Yeah. <laughs> You That's could probably weird. call me on a phone and I could be there, but that would be it. <laughs> oh, oh right. yes. Yes, um, Omega comes in through conference call to be a panelist. What the <laughs> fuck? We're breaking shit <laughs> around here. I don't think I'm... In all my, in all my uh, convention adventures, I have... Oh, man, say that three times fast. Convention adventures. Um... I have never ever seen a panelist come through on like Skype or Discord conference call style. You know, never seen it. Hmm. I think well, it's I probably because you sound awful when you do that. Oh yeah, I mean you'll see like a video message, but that's pre-recorded. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'd be that'd be interesting. Oh yeah, it's always video messages I remember seeing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think we've we. I don't... Earlier, we hit all the anime topics we were starting out on. Uh, like well, I mentioned I mean, all the stuff I caught up on. We about Slime and how like, amazing that show is. Yeah. Big titty elf. Big titty elf. Just elf. Elf. Elf I'd like to fuck. Like, I don't know if like that's what the like what original, but that's how Crunchyroll um, subbed in. You know, I'm okay with that. I have also, I think, seen it as... the. Well, when you hear him say it, it's like... He says elf, but he he definitely leans more into the R, like arrow. So, which I think that's what the pun is. Arrow elf, so, like E R O. So I think he's like trying to say like eros. Yeah, something but, like that. Like, and but, then he puts like, an F at the end. It's a pun. The but Japanese I like how Crunchyroll stuff that they put it um e dot i dot l dot f. Yeah, and I'm like, ah, I believe this, and it's good. And what's even great is that the specific style of the elves is like back in like the 2000, like fucking, not 2000s, like the 1990s with Record of Lotus War. It's fucking deed lit. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh. I said that earlier that, that, um, he must be an, an old school otaku character 
because he he dreams of elves in Record of Lotus War Vision. Which is a very distinct style when you think back to it. It's like, God, it's like, it's kind of like, there's something that's to be said about just how anime has changed visually over the years. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so magical. I don't know, but that's like, as I said, Slime is good. Goblin Slayer is all right. Gridman is. I mean, like, if, if we want to do another, like, 30 minute rant about Party Comp, um, I have thoughts and feelings about Goblin Slayer now. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Now they're actually, now it's a real party. Yeah. yeah. Now they know what the fuck they're doing. Well, I, was, well, I said we got we got time. They also we have two time. different priests. Yeah. Well, no, actually, one. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah well, no, actually, right. yeah, it's it's debatable. The so the high elf explicitly calls herself a ranger. Yep. And that's what she is. She is bow and small weapons, and she sees all the traps and stuff. The dwarf is some kind of shaman. He's or a mage, like, technically. Yeah, because the uh, the lizard man is a shaman. Yeah, yeah. okay, so, well, he, he is some kind of spiritual caster. Like, if he could turn into an animal, I'd call him a druid. Uh, no, some kind he, of sp- he gets spiritual with fucking force. spirits. Yeah, exactly. No, it is spirits, it's fucking drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's um, but yes, no, he, he, he casts, like, elemental spirit spells. Like, when he casts his, his earth blast, he calls out for tiny gnomes to roll up the dirt. Yep, um, right. The lizard man is explicitly a, is a, a shaman, and he is using... You know, shamanistic totems. Also, if this was like modern D and D, he wouldn't be a lizard man; he'd be a dragonborn. That's yeah. That's right. that's like basically what he's doing. And then you have the actual priestess, who is uh, still uh, locked into her cleric role and doing a good job. Good job. And uh, yeah, no, like like you said the last time, like they explicitly call out they only got a couple spells per day. Um, the lizard man uh, needs totems for a lot of his spells. To summon his dragon tooth warriors and his sweet Kopesh sword, <laughs> <laughs> but also he's 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 got almost like a like a, a melee build too. Also, yeah, um, right. Because he he took the place of Goblin Slayer when he went down. Right. Oh yeah, no, he's a he can he's a guy who can take the front line if needed. Yeah, I've I've heard some places argue that he's almost like a paladin in that he is he is a warrior who is also holy. Actually, you know, like, now that I think about it, that actually does make a kind of sense. It's like, because one of the things, a lot of things that when people think of paladins, they always think of, like, you know, like, the big C kind of god, you know, with armor and whatnot. Yeah. But, like, you yeah. know, different cultures have Knights shining like, armor and stuff. But, yeah, no, like, technically you can be, I mean, depending on what edition you're playing, you can be a lot of different, like, um, fourth edition was kind of controversial, but the way they did it was, they did paladins like clerics where you had to be, I think it was within one alignment step of your god. So yeah. you didn't have to necessarily be a good paladin. You just had to be a holy warrior for your god. Um, that's usually how clerics work. Yeah. Actually, um, now that I think about that, I kind of want to do that for my next fantasy campaign. Just be a holy warrior of some like sort of shamanistic society. That yeah, it's awesome. Um, and then, um, like you said, the 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 dwarf is some kind of elemental caster. He's not like a wizard. Because he's he's calling out to like spirits and stuff, but he he has a very elemental focused magic. Maybe more say a sorcerer. I don't know. Well, sor- well, yeah. In in D and D terms, a sorcerer is supposed to be somebody who be has be calling on spirits. He might just be like that. Might just be his fucking his yeah, fucking true. verbal component right there of how he as how he says things. Uh but yeah. So I'll like I said. Um, I I would say if he. Though he seems like if if he could like turn into animals, that would hands down be a druid type caster, like throwing around like throwing around nature type magic. Uh, and also, uh, we like we talked about how the the first the first quote unquote adventure, the first dungeon crawl was like, yeah, you're you're that's not necessarily super realistic because your DM's not going to get that minutiae in you. Um, the bullshit they do in the the, the tower infested by goblins that is one hundred and ten percent player characters. Yep. All right, we're gonna we're gonna cast silence so they can't yell, and then we're gonna cast sleep so they all fall asleep, and we're gonna and we're gonna coup de grace them all. That's a player character tactic. Uh, I'm gonna use mm-hmm. a gate spell, and I'm gonna shoot wa- high pressure water at him because my gate is linked to the, under the sea. Oh yeah, that was somebody's definitely done that trick before in D and D. That's like um that's like dumb tricks like the peasant railgun or um uh, I remember it, there was an infamous story where they um. They rushed down a dungeon hallway that was going to be really hard to these player characters do. That was going to be hard to do by greasing some some dwarven rowboats and just run them down the hallway so they picked up high speed. 
Best like, part is you can't say it came out of nowhere because they foreshadowed it twice. Yes. One obvious, one subtle. Where one, they called back what the mage said about her uh, mm-hmm. enchanting his scrolls and stuff. But second, he's claimed to have drowned goblins in that same episode. Yes. So. When he talks about all the stuff he does, drown him, smash him, burn him, smoke him out. And <laughs> poor High Elf is just like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Poor, See, this poor what I, High this Elf. This is what I like about the High Elf is that she has the mind of a more traditional. Oh, yeah, adventurer. no. She, she, I mean, she explains what she thinks adventuring should be like. It should be an adventure. It's not it, just, which just is not extra not. hilarious because she explicitly says her age and she's like, Hey, how young? What do you call it? Do you call him a young Mr. Dwarf man? I'm 2,000 years old. I feel like she's lying about her age, but you know, whatever. I, I mean, maybe hey, not, I but. Say it's elf years and not like actual, like, oh, well, she's actually 2,000, like, literally 2,000 years old. Well, yeah, no, like, brain. it's elves are always weird depending on your edition. Most, most of them do do the rule where it's like, you're not an adult until you're like 100. After all, isn't, um, in one. There's at least, like, a few books where they talk about, like, the gestation period of elves. Isn't it supposed to be, like, years? Like, they're yeah, years no, in like the Yeah, no, like, uh, anybody who tries to think logically about the fact that elves live super long, including forever, uh, always comes up with lots of, like, okay, so elves have to gr- mat- grow and mature super slow, and they have to, like, gestate slow and, and other stuff, and yeah, no. So, like, at 2K, she's probably still youngish for an elf, regardless of whether she means that literally 2,000 years or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still, she she places herself chronologically as the oldest in the room, but she is, like, weirdly enough, one of the most naive. Yep. And then Lizardman shuts them down by saying, hey, let's not talk about age. It only makes the people who don't live so long feel bad. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, no, so it's it was really interesting to see her character and kind of her go through this shift of, like, hey, Orc Bulg, we're gonna go kill some goblins. That's cool, right? And, like, Oh my god, this is not what I want it to be. This sucks. Everything <laughs> sucks. God. Why did I leave my fucking forest? Also, it has that classic scene where they're like, th- they start by talking about like the demon lord and his generals and blah blah blah, and, and Gumsay is just like, are they goblins? Okay, then I don't care. Are there goblins? <laughs> it's like, that's not a goblin. <laughs> and then they're like, and then, then the moment they vaguely mention the fact that there will be goblins, he's like, I'll do it. I'm interested. How many are there? <laughs> Where are they located? I don't care what you, p- you can pay me whatever you want. Goblin Slayer is like, honestly, like, really, like, can be said, like, as much as there is, there's adventurers and there's like, you know, the big hero, but you probably can consider like Goblin Slayer something more akin to a folk hero. Like, he even got, he got people singing about him. Right. Oh, yeah. well, well, I mean, they have a fucking, they have a name for him in fucking Elvish. They l- literally, they call him Orkbold because they've heard Orku, of him. Orku. <laughs> and then check. I don't get what the dwarven name for him is. They they translated in the subs as beard cutter. I, yeah. I think this, is, I think this is back to Lord of the Rings, honestly. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously. Um, which is that's where a lot of um high fantasy tropes come from. Which is ironic because uh, most D and D high fantasy is is also still absolutely nothing like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Even if they stole they stole their stuff from there, but there's still nothing like it. Um. To the point of that's here. that's why we have halflings because Hobbits is copyrighted. <laughs> and we honestly, a lot of settings kind of clutch halflings in there. I think there. I'm pretty sure there's a halfling equivalent in um, Goblin Slayer too. They're not called that though. Oh, they're called a uh, Rhea. Yeah, R H E A. This becomes important later. But yes, no, it's it it's it's still a very entertaining, and I like it a lot. And um, they're they're definitely doing good stuff. Um, and they we talked about like now they're doing like actual party tactics like. You know, uh, one guy doing the DPS, like, focuses, they distract the bad guy. They have the, the cleric drop spells to tank. Uh, it's, it's, you can definitely tell that the author, original author, has played some D&D or equivalent in his or her time. And they, they know the ropes and the tropes. Okay, if I remember, if I remember correctly, 
Orkbolg, it basically means, literally means, um, Goblin Slayer. And then the dwarves were just like, oh, and the dwarves were just like, oh, look at this blade. It'd be good enough for cutting your beard or ah. something like that. And that's why they call him the Beard Cutters, because they're basically making fun of the Elvish name for it. Because mm. in, um, in The Hobbit, the sword that Frodo finds is Orc Wrist, which means Orc Goblin Wrist. Cleaver. Mm. I thought I thought Orc Bold was the name of the sword, but no, there's just an orc named Bolg in the Hobbit. I got that. I yeah, got that. Orc Wrist, uh, which is uh, yeah, it's orc also Christ. called Biter. But no, there's like there's a lot of um, Lord of the Rings uh, nods in here. I feel like Orc Bold is kind of in it. I think maybe like the guy might have understood, but whatever. Hmm. Then there's Glamdring, this is a later. faux hammer. Also called a beater. Uh, Lots of fun little lore touches. Good quality mm-hmm. writing. But yeah, also we talked about slime. Slime's really good. I'm loving it. It's just... I, The the character of, of Rimuru is just... He's still good. He's just, a, he's just a greatly written character because he's just out there minding his own business, doesn't want all this trouble... But he has the toolkit to get out of trouble. Not like free, but they established like he has he had access to certain resources that he cultivated that he can use later. And he has to think about it some of the times. But usually he's like, hey, I can do this thing. And then sometimes he does too much. And he's like, shit. He's like, whoops. But then he gets elf and all all is okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he loves the elves and the elves love him because he's fucking adorable. Yep. Which I find great because, like, you can't really consider, like, slime a harem isekai because, for one, Rimuru is generalist. Like, this is one of those things that they don't actually explain. They haven't explained so far. They might explain later in the next couple of episodes. Yeah, it'll probably come up because we know from the opening, if you're not familiar with it, there's a humanoid form. That'll probably be when they start talking about that kind of stuff because, obviously... Yeah, like- He's genderless like, have right you seen, now. Have you, seen the, have, you seen the, have you seen the new ending where they showed, like, full naked body? Nothing. Got to nothing. He has nothing. It's mm-hmm. something that he, like, harps on a lot in the light novel, actually. Like, how well, that makes, It also his... makes sense for his character, too, because that would be kind of like, I'm finally in a universe in the world where I can, you know, touch elf boobs all day, and... Wow, there's uh, some limitations and he, here. He, and he uh, constantly bemoans the loss of his son, as it would. But he still rolls with it, which I think is going to, because the guy's like, he's not like devoid of, um, what's the word I want to say, agency, but he's also willing to like kind of roll with how things are going. Like, mm-hmm. cause like he literally has nothing better to do. Like fucking, all right, so now I'm in this cave. Let me wander around, eat some grass. I got nothing better to do. Whatever. Oh, check out this dragon. Oh, fuck. I ate him. Well, fuck. Now that's done. Let me get out of here. I'll check this shit out. I'm outside, and goblins need my help. You know what? I had nothing better to fucking do. Let's help them. I ate but a wolf. Need... Yep. Now these goblins are kind of in a bad situation where they won't be able to survive, so let me try to get them out. Now I got roped into a dwarf kingdom shit. And it just keeps going on and on. It's like, things are progressing in a story fashion. They're mm-hmm. not literally just making up things to progress the yeah. story. Like, things kind of No, stuff, stuff logically happens as an out growth of Rinmaru in in the thing doing stuff. And yeah. it's not like he's at this moment anyway, it's not like he's bulletproof or anything, right? Like yeah. okay, so he he's way stronger than he thought he was, but at the same time obviously still stuff doesn't automatically go his way. Like the moment when like um, when you're there outside the uh, checkpoint and those like those those fight those adventurers like at- use the attack and he was like oh shit I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to survive that or not because he, he literally you know, has no idea he's like did I did I accidentally level up something while I wasn't looking <laughs> and then he uses his um, menace ability and like <laughs> I love how the great sage gave him a list by list of what happened he's like I didn't need to know that well and, yeah and that's a very much a, a video game type response like oh <laughs> menace passed. You did this and this and this. Also, Menace is still adorable, though. The, 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 I'm like upset, like that. 
Um, I think one of my favorite screens is when the first time you use it and he turns back into a slime, they leave the ears and tail just for long enough. I'm like, that is adorable. Oh my god. I'm gonna, hang on, let me Google like let me Google Rimuruj plush here. Uh-huh. But yeah, no, like um just we we talked about this with um like Liz's voice acting in FGO. Oh my god. Uh oh. He Googled something. Sorry, hang yeah. on, hang on, hang on. Let me let me let me link, I'll link this in the Patreon chat. Nice. Are those air inflated? I can't tell. But people make these. Um, I need to get um in. Uh, I need to get in contact with some people because I think I need these plushes. Oh wow. Nice. Well, it's pretty easy. It's it's making it's like making dongos. You ever watch Clan Ed? <laughs> oh my god, I cried. <laughs> I actually have a uh, two giant oh, shit, Familio no. Dongo plushies that somebody made by themselves, and I got them for thirty bucks at a convention. Oh wow! They they well, only they... had the two, and I bought them, and because they were at an auction. Well, honestly, was, oh, like I'm pretty sure. How much for buying these? I'm pretty sure I, if I, next time I go to whatever anime convention, I'm be, but I will probably find some Rimuru plushies there. Oh, it looks like they're made of like a. Like, uh, what's that material? It's like a mesh, I'm like sure. made out of a mesh fabric, like you would wear on like track pants or something. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like how that feels personally. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, like, I would get these. I would like cover my bed with these. But are they haunted? I don't know. They might be haunted. <laughs> Probably they suck your dick and call you gay. Eh. Memes, everyone. Memes. All right. Let's see. So we talk about a lot of anime. Good. And that's what we usually do: anime and video games. I know. Well, guys, I'm actually games. gonna have to go soon anyway because I have to get ready to go and do birthday stuff. Yeah. Mm. All right, boys, you get on out of here. We'll All right. Thanks for having me, guys. It was fun. No, thanks for hey, thanks for spending your birthday with us. Oh, of course. It's great. It wasn't too long. It was fun. It was great. I had a good time. Bam. Oh. Awesome. All right. See you guys. Have Peace. fun with the rest of yeah. it. We will. Have fun with your birthday, boys. All right. He's gone. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. You guys, you both killed me a lot this episode. Your comedic timing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I like to think sometimes I have good comedic timing, but then I hang out with these guys, audience. Um. So... Uh, I think it's time for a little something talking about games. Mm. It's time for your Legend of the Five Rings news update. Oh, shit. Uh, so, hey, yes, I got um, Whispers of Shadow and Steel. That arrived on Monday. Oh, nice. Uh, I read it. Uh, it's good. I like the Sword and the Spirits better, but it's still good. Um, Lucky you would be interested in it, I think, because you said you were interested in maybe playing Scorpion. It gets into that Scorpion yeah. ethos a lot. Also, um, well, I bought them a hard copy because... I wanted to, and I felt like it, and I could. Um, they are available on Drive Through Fiction for like four bucks in ebook format. So, like, mm. if you if you want to just get some reading done, they're pretty cheap. Uh, also important though, uh, friggin' finally, the official PDF of the Legend of the Five Ring rules came out uh, just a couple of days ago. So that's great. That's way better. They've already done some corrections and errata for some of the errors in the original physical book print. So that's good. That's kind of what I was waiting on. Uh, but yeah, it's out. And uh, if you're interested in Legend of the Five Rings, it's like 25 bucks as opposed to like 50 bucks for a hardcover. And it's it's good. It's a good looking game. We'll play it sometime. Uh, but first, we're probably going to play Mages of War because you guys are finally finishing your characters. Finally. Yeah. Um, I'm almost done. Like, honestly, like, I'm literally on my gear list. And I'm... I want to say I'm almost done. Like, I want to still, like, buy, like, because I got my skills done. I finally got my companion done. My companion was definitely not influenced by an assistant in anime. Not at all. But, actually, if I'm probably, if I'm pretty sure, yeah, no. Like, someone might call me out on it later, but I, whatever. But I finally got her done. Like, I think she's great. Uh, let me pull up my character sheet here real quick. Uh, yeah, I was going to gonna actually ask if you wanted to talk about them. But, um. Okay, yeah, so, uh, mm-hmm. like, Marth got his through. I think he needs to polish up, he might need to polish up some aspects of his companion. Um, but 
Uh, I know he he's playing a just a generic grunt, and he got a corman as a. Yep. So you guys have a medic, basically. Uh, yeah, so you, I was a bit more selfish, yeah. but I also invested a bit more in mine because mine's a comrade and adjutant. Mm-hmm. You doubled up a little bit. Yeah, I doubled up a little bit. Just, I unfortunately though, I'm I was a little upset with myself earlier because I misread uh, your rule. Because at first I thought it said um, stats, skills, and and ability. No, it's no, it's stats, still or ability. I was like, damn it. Yeah, I'm making you. My I'm, I wrote it so you make good choices. Good job, passed me. <laughs> Pat passed no, me on the back. Sense. But I'm still okay with it because, like, because even though I have to spend 250 experience for it, I wanted the com. Like originally, I was gonna go with the adjutant, but I wanted the comrade so I could at least purposely say I have like history with this particular person. Mm-hmm. So it was fine, and I and I kept the skills because, goddamn, like I feel like like. Need some skills so she can do stuff. Yep. Also, gonna test out having a uh, trauma, like right out the gate. Yeah, I like noticed it. that, which is very interesting like, because the way I wrote the 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 trauma quirk is that it's it is literally indefinite. Like if you if you botch a fear test bad enough, you will gain a temporary trauma mm-hmm. from the the situation. But usually, assuming nothing happens to like refresh your trauma, you will work through it and get functional after a few months. Yep, which isn't like a hundred percent accurate to psychology, but it's also like I don't necessarily want to build like a super complex mental health system that's not super important to this. It's mostly just like, hey, do you have a really bad shock, and or does someone use magic to flip your shit? <laughs> yeah, um, like. For, but you explicitly uh, picked the trauma as like a no. I have a deep seated trauma that's not going away anytime soon. Yeah. I took one for both me and my companion because I needed the XP to not. Yeah, and honestly, you complex. picked a. You probably picked a really out of character, a really shitty one because you picked night terrors. Yeah. Like it's like it's like my boy legit has PTSD. Yeah, I He's think we, we've decided that you you spent a little time on the uh on the Western Front already before yep. being reassigned it's to like, sunny I'm, Africa. Like. And no one's it's like he doesn't tell if anyone if it was motion motion. And his adjutant, who's been with him at the same time, has the uh, trauma necrophobia. Um, dead bodies are a no go. Hmm. <laughs> what has happened? Yeah. Yeah. No one knows. It's actually gonna be very interesting. But like that's the thing I was thinking about when I was looking at my. Cr- I'm like, I have too many good things. Like a, a character when you make a creation, they should not be like entirely like shining examples. You need to well, have and some also bad um, the the quirk rules are, are written explicitly to prevent that. You can only you can only buy so many positives. You you can't even I think spend all your starting XP on positive quirks because it's like you can only spend so much. So you have to either yeah. take neutrals, which are double sided, or you have to actually take negatives to get XP back. Yeah. So like the four quirks I got now is I still got I still kept um, Cromadery and um, Natural Leader. So as long as my um my uh adjutant stays close to me, she you know she'll get her tw- plus twenty to like um resist her necrophobia because that's the thing the traumas aren't like something that automatically you still have to make a roll for them. Yeah. Uh, specifically, those so the phobia tests, disorder is you've developed an irrational fear. Um, yep. And you have to make a will test to approach or interact with the source of your fear, and if that thing causes a um a fear test, you take a minus 10 penalty on it. And if you're surprised, you might roll another fear test. So if you, like, in this case, if you had necrophobia, you open a closet and a skeleton pulls out, that's probably a fear test because, guess what, you're freaked out by skeletons. Skeletons, dead bodies, corpses. Uh-huh. Uh, n- night stuff. terrors is the soldier has bouts of nocturnal anxiety, panic attacks, and occasionally vivid nightmares related to their trauma, causing them to awake and experience feelings of panic or distress. While sleeping, or rather, when sleeping, roll the will test to avoid night fairs. If failed, they do not sleep properly that night and will not recover fatigue or other conditions as normal. So basically, every time you sleep, you have to make a will test, otherwise it doesn't count as you slept. This is why my character has a lot of coffee and also has the negative quirk unkempt. You have a shabby, disorganized, or unclean appearance. Mm -hmm. And you actually asked me, hey, can I clean up from unkempt? And I'm like, yeah, if you want to take time to go out of your way, but anytime you rest or otherwise reset, you basically reset to being unkempt because that's just how you naturally look. Yeah, I know. That was fine. That that, that makes perfect sense. Because, mm-hmm. like, I was just thinking about that. It's like, I can understand if, like, I'm naturally kind of sloppy, but if I have to attend a, like, a 
function of some form on this. Like, I feel like I would put in enough effort to at least not look like a piece of shit. It's like literally, like, it's literally fucking, um, God, what is his name? I was just watching the fucking show yesterday. Um, Mitsurugi? Kill a kill. Fucking. Well, yeah, that was the example you used. Uh, uh, ah! Can't think of his name. God damn it. Anyway, I'm scrolling in my own I'm document. Scrolling. I'm gonna find him. I'm gonna find him. Uh, and yeah, I don't want to say like it's Miki Sugi. It's Miki Sugi. That's what it is. It's Miki Sugi. Basically, like he looks like this really shabby, you know, hunched over Cajun. Then all of a sudden, it's nudist beach, and all of a sudden, he's this fabulous pink glittering motherfucker. Like mm-hmm. honestly, I was like playing around with the idea that I take stunning beauty too, and it's literally a transformation sequence. I think that would be fucking hilarious. Yeah, and technically those aren't those aren't necessarily literal opposites because yeah. they do slightly different things. They have slightly different um they're on different cost levels. The 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 bonuses kind of cancel out, but you can also do other stuff with stunning beauty. Yeah, I know, but like with the uncapped, like if I like temporarily negate the uncapped, all of a sudden I'm stunning beauty. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about that. I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna keep these fucking. I, I'm gonna keep up this buff aura. This uh, will buff aura. You know, you're 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 good at, at your job. <laughs> Let's hope. But yeah, yeah so I like... I, um, I've already ran because I have random tables for this. Holy shit! I uh, randomly rolled the first operation already. So as soon as you guys are, are finished, I can set that up to start out. And yeah, so, like right now, I'm just going through my fucking gear because I like stuff. I'm trying not to have too much stuff, but I'm gonna have some stuff. I mean, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the point. The game is definitely written to be you can get into the stuff if you want to, because it's like I've said before, it's very much about having the right tools to do stuff. Like, I don't I don't know if both of you picked up ball bearings, yep. uh, but at least one of you did, I think. Yeah, I did. Like my magic kit, quote unquote, currently has ball bearings, chalk, iron filings and wax candles. Yeah. Um, I know Marth for sure picked up the chalk and also a bag of salt. Uh, because oh, purifying salt, salt is super important. Uh, I should get salt too. God damn it. Uh, I'm also pretty sure he has soap, which is another. Basically, the th- I think the three basics of of doing magic in this system is soap, salt, and chalk. Like those are all fundamental. Yeah, Chalk's not that. really important for a ro- for a ritualistic purpose. Just sometimes you need to draw shit. You need chalk. <laughs> um, salt is important because it purifying salt literally has mechanical implications. Um, as to soap, uh, soap is like a, a, uh, because interestingly enough, soap is made of, uh, usually made of rendered animal fat, um, which it means it counts as part of the void element. It's, it's part of living life repurposed. So, um, ah, soap cleanses, uh, and salt Fuck. cleanses also. Oh, well, I need to get soap cause I need to put that in my grooming kit. Yeah. Cause so like, like there's all my, like, my standard equipment when I got from, um, just from, uh, my classes and whatnot, which was like, you know, the core, field glasses, goggles, a focus, grooming kit, mask kick, rescue hook, survival ration, trench whistle, wearable radio, and a wristwatch. And then I have this next section of things I actually added, like a backpack, a bedroll, desert scarf. I picked up a sweet duster because I was like, God damn it. If people in the Wild West could wear dusters to be all right, I'm pretty sure I can make it in Africa. And then, you know, I decided to go fucking like full psycho mantis. I got a gas mask. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get a peaked cap. I'm gonna wear those three items together and look like something out of a fucking post-apocalyptic movie. That's um okay. pretty fair for playing a World War One esque game. Yep. You you basically came from the apocalypse if you left the Western Front. Yep. Uh, let's see, hammer, lighter, multi-tool, tactical rigging, violin. I decided my character plays the violin. Why? Because you're not just a fucking war machine. You also, yes, you're. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you're, you're in. Um, what's your background? Cadet. Yeah, no. Uh, you're a fucking career officer. You went through military school. Yeah, no. You're fucking upper crust as fuck. Yeah. Like I'm gonna be buying like some coffee, like some alcohol. Like I'm gonna be buying that shit in bulk because you know gotta spread the wealth a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, because I'll tell you um right now um coming from the military, people don't like career officers unless they're real nice to you. Yeah, and guess you, you, having been in the field recently, you would know a lot of these guys are not going to be happy about anything you're going to have to ask them to do. Yep, so guess what? Get them coffee, get them alcohol, and then occasionally get them women. 
Not not from your own company though. That 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 breeds problems though. Well, we we have discussed made made units are co-ed. However, I'm uh, slightly surprised, but also slightly happy. Nobody did pick Gun Mall for their companion. I was like, I was like thinking about it for a little bit. I won't lie, but I'm like, mm, no, I child friend situation who could totally be secretly crushing on me and hides it behind a sadistic personality. Yes, my companion, um, her quirks, because I, um, I picked those out for her as well, are nearsighted, statistic, stingy, and trauma necrophobia. So she's pretty much the person who, like, has me on her leash, has, you know, like, looks down at me from her fucking glasses, and doesn't let me spend any fucking thing- money on anything she thinks is useless. The budget, Leutnant. Also, what? by the way, I'm gonna, pre- I'm gonna warn you now, I'm not gonna do German accents the whole time, that's bad. It's gonna, yeah, it's, right. it's gonna kill me. Only when dramatically appropriate. Well, that reminds me. But, um... Actually, I need to figure out what yeah. rank your, your adjutant would be. Probably a senior I need to figure NCO. out what rank I'm at. Uh, you're a lieutenant. I, I just know I'm an officer. Uh, you're a lieutenant. Uh, that's the equivalent of lieutenant. second lieutenant. You were probably a... a you were probably still counted as, like, a cadet or in-training officer in the field before. So this is your first, uh, like, real officer assignment. And then, the, like, yeah, you're going to be a platoon commander? Yeah, I think that's, that's what I wrote down. Platoon commander, and then there's the company commander, who's your legendary famous operative. That's why your unit has such Ta-da. high morale. Yeah, morale. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I've read them before, but uh, to kind of go over with you and with everybody, what the what the campaign conditions are is you're in a you're in a theater that's that has it's resource poor, it's high summer, the roads are bad. And you have freak weather. Uh, but your campaign has legendary commander, high morale, and strategic mission. So the the military side, the like um, the personnel and like psychological side, you guys are way up. The battlefield and like resources side, way down there. It's hot. You there's friggin' nothing for natural resources left in this area. You're engaging. Your infrastructure is shot. That's why you guys are probably glad that you're um, air mages, because we decided that yeah, you're because you're because you're technically an honor guard unit, and I decided that the company commander you're assigned to is a flying mage. You guys are all flying mages, um, <laughs> so you're probably happy about that. But it's going to be hot. It, you're not going to ha- be able to find shit out in the w- wilderness. Uh, on foot reinforcements are going to suck at all times. Oh, and it might just occasionally do something freakish with the weather when I feel like it. Uh, and you guys are the col- the eighth colonial guard fusiliers platoon. Fusiliers. What does fusiliers mean again? I think it's just rifle guy. Ah. So you're yeah you're guard fusiliers. You are the rifleman guards. Let's see here. I'm gonna get bulk coffee, maybe some honey. Probably sugar, alcohol, alcohol for days. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you have an alcohol ration, but uh, and your your is corpsman it, uh, has a first aid kit, so he has he has the medical alcohol. Yeah, that morphine. No, I mean lit- literally, he has medicinal alcohol in there. He's got a tiny bottle of something. Actually, when was morphine made? Uh, by now, uh, you can you can access painkillers. Oh, let's see here. Painkillers are a regular item along with combat stims. Oh god, it was discovered in fucking wait. Oh wow, it was like discovered in the early eighteen hundreds. Yeah, no, no, morphine's a thing. Uh and if you want Damn. to, you can get I have I wrote down a like a ruling for like opium. You want if yeah. you if you want to chase the dragon. Oh yeah, that's oh yeah, huh. Yeah, but I'm excited to play like soon. Yeah, hopefully soon. I'm not going to go ahead and say, like, this week, but soon. You guys will have to finish up and we'll have to find the right time. But yes, yeah. no, it's good. Like I said, I, that's why I went out of my way. I, I took some time and I, you know, rolled out the adventure and I picked what I want to do. And I got a good, a good, a good, a good idea. And uh, obviously that will be recorded for the channel. Yep. Like all our previous oh, here's major things. Um, here's the thing I wanted to ask real quick. Um, are you going to be sticking with the rule that, like, someone else has to roleplay your companion besides the player themselves? I find that kind of silly. Well, I mean, I, I think, think that's... Uh, depending on how I wrote it, I think the intent is that's me. 
I'm I role play back and forth with your companion, but you obviously control their actions. Mostly just so you don't have to talk to yourself. Well, what if I told you I'm completely fine with talking to myself? Uh, I mean, I can let it slide. That's fine if you want. If you really want to talk yeah. to yourself, that's mostly what the rule the ruling is there for. It's like it's it's meant to prevent issues where you like have to talk to yourself. That's a usual thing when that happens. Like um, you you get like another player or a or the GM to handle kind of your your interaction back and forth there. If you really yeah, talk like, to yourself, well, that's my fine. main issue that was coming from that is. When someone creates a character, they usually have like a certain way they have them like want to act or like whatever. And so if you hand it off to someone else and they don't like kind of you're kind of like, what are you doing with my character? It's like, you've ruined it. So like I'd like for the sake of like maintaining that, I'm totally willing to talk to myself. I talk to myself like on a general basis anyway. So I think I can make this work. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Gonna be good. But yeah, that's why the, the default rule is there. Starting uh, and I think, I think every because uh, I said it was okay. Everybody's gonna have a tropical uniform. Basically, you're gonna have desert equipped desert uniforms. Clothing, yeah. I want a peak hat just because I'm an officer. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you hat. didn't do the other thing, which is like filigree. Yeah, like honestly, if like because the thing says you only get like two. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, tropical uniform and a hat. If I got three, yeah, I totally would have picked filigree. Uh, filigree, by the way, means that your uniform is bling as fuck. You get a bonus right. on leadership roles, but it's very easy for anybody to tell you're somebody important, which means you draw yeah. all kinds of aggro. All the aggro. But now yeah, it's not so. it's not necessarily in everybody's best interest in this war to go off killing mage mage officers because that's kind of that's, that's kind of against the cultural norms. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they I'll won't see, shoot you a little I'll... bit to shut you up. <laughs> Actually, especially since you've got trench whistle, and your adjutant has a trench whistle too. Motherfucker. So you can you can basically the trench whistle gives you an excuse to issue orders, even if you wouldn't necessarily be yelling them. Not that you have any orders to issue yet. It's funny. It's exactly like um. Yeah, that's one of those things. Like, like eventually, like, like last time I made a character, I went for the dual element. Mm-hmm. Um, thing, and I was all, and I realized this actually kind of sucks because yeah. if you're not gonna like spec and just be in spell slinging, it's like it's it's not worth it. You need to because you got like already you gotta like buy your stat upgrades, you gotta buy skill upgrades, you gotta buy your spells, and then like if you're an officer, then you have to worry about officer talents on top of that. It's like officer is like like <laughs> officer is definitely what you would call the high uh, high difficulty. Option, yeah, that's why I, I moved say. it to the move it to the APG because it's it's not a required system, but if yeah. you want to interact with it, you can get a lot out of it. Like um, like you buy lightning skirmish, everybody in the first round of combat gets plus two base movement. Just like okay, we're starting. Everybody go, go, go fast. Go, go. Uh, you get there. A lot of them are based on like orders and that type of stuff from like um VC series and some other games like that. So like you can make a command test and be like, hey medic who's not on screen, heal that guy and just. He, he he's mysteriously healed by the narrative, uh, you know, and then at the higher levels, if you don't mind dropping some major XP, you can get stuff like sniper fire and artillery strikes and bombing runs and just, you know, uh, just get off screen support. And so, yeah, it's very helpful, but it also it costs a little bit. And companions can cost, but I think I'm going to do companion XP anyway. So they they You're basically do separately, yeah, basically give you exp only to spend on companion talents. That seems fine to me because that's a that's a rule you can do. It's like, hey, if you want to if you want to make sure you're incentivizing the companion talents, go ahead and give them exp for that, and then they get stuff. Most of them, especially at the lower levels, are like making sure that they can get new skills and that they add new equipment without having to like buy them equipment, and then giving them a little bit of stuff. So like um. Uh, if you have like a hundred companion XP, you can buy Radio Man. That means that the companion the companion gains a radio pack, and they're trained in cryptography if they weren't already. Not a big deal, but you know it's a useful skill. I think that's cheaper than that might be cheaper than player characters can train in cryptography. Yeah, <laughs> actually, probably. Like um, the you can buy the gunsmith talent so that they they become trained in mechanics if they aren't already. They get a toolkit, um, and they get a plus 10 bonus on mechanics test to hand load ammunition or repair weapons, and they get 
a single weapon mod to use on one of their weapons as just part of their standard kit. So yeah, you get you get a decent uh, you know attraction out of it. You can you can get good cop, bad cop. You can give them extra carrying capacity. Lots of other weird stuff. Uh, some of my favorites are some of the just the weird ones, like um, uh, like over here, you can make them basically distract the enemy for you. Um, you can do I do the talking so that basically they they cover for you in social situations. Uh, one of my favorites is body double, where the companion gets a bonus to disguise themselves as you, and mm. enemies have to make an awareness check to figure out who's who. And then you can also give them to weapon training so they can get heavier weapons and stuff. You guys actually went pretty light on the weapons so far, which will be really interesting. Because uh, last time you did not. Yeah. Uh, you had one guy with a shotgun and one guy with an SMG and lots of grenades, so. <laughs> the shotgun was super effective, though. Yeah. So was the sword. Mm-hmm. The sword but was actually more effective, than, <laughs> more effective than the shotgun. You still have kind the sword. Of one of the, that's kind of one of the reasons why, um, yeah. I was like, that, I won't lie, that was kind of one of the reasons that I uh, I picked the things in, because I can't remember which one it was that just basically switches out your weapon with a sword. I'm like, I want that. I'm going to be a metal mage. I'm going to go cut things with my sword. Uh, that was that was the homeland, because your signature weapon is being from the Stahl Empire, basically the German Empire in the, you know, First World War, is you get a, a long sword as your trained weapon, because, hey, guess what? Your country's crazy. You actually uh, train in close combat, and... Uh, people do, in fact, still do duels in academies with swords t- to first blood. I also get a halibird? I was yeah, like, hmm. that's just free equipment because you're an honor guard, so you have, like, a... You have a big, shiny pole arm to carry in parades and stuff, and also hit people yeah. with. I'm gonna use temper on this. Actually has range, like, range of two meters. Yeah, no, um, I'll, I'll, uh, the couple of pole arms that exist in the setting have a couple of extra uh, meters of reach, like, um, melee is generally people within like one meter ish of you, so that's like swords, punching or kicking people. You know, you can usually get up around around a meter ish and stab them or hit them. But pole arms yeah. are like, oh, you can you can definitely reach out and touch somebody with a halberd. <laughs> God forbid you ever run into anybody with like really huge weapons, because certain types of horrible monsters have great reach on stuff. Not that I know if you're you're gonna run into a lot of horrible monsters in the in the setting just because of where you are. I feel you are like kind I'm of gonna in... run the horrible monsters. I kind of feel like Africa be one of those places just by how many horrible monsters there are there in the real world. True, but you are in a desert, so. Oh yeah. Well, like now you... I gotta look out for fucking supernatural snakes. Right. Sure. But yeah, I was just gonna say like you uh, you don't need to worry about like wyvern nests or anything. Because there's no mountains, like you're not gonna run into like a harpy colony or something. Yeah, I gotta look how much antivenom costs. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, that's actually a very valid concern. It could be, it could be. It's a little expensive because it's kind of a big deal. Is just being like, no poison, nope. Well, that's the advanced players guy. God damn it. Yeah, you're in the wrong book. Uh, though, I'm in the wrong book. Uh, you can, um, it's funny, you can actually, with uh, with a companion, buy Poisoner, which gives them uh, ability to use or cure a, po- a poison, and they get both anti-venom and a poison coat added to their standard equipment, so they can do both. Honestly, that's probably what I'm going to get for my companion. It seems like something she would do. So basically, you always have a little, little bit of anti-venom lying around, but also some poison for stuff. For stuff. And it doesn't specify what poison code it is, so you could figure it out. Because I make sure there are a couple of options of poisons. Oh, well, that's why I'm using the wrong search function. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, that happens a lot with Google. But yeah, no, there we're kind of we're kind of excited to play and to to get this out there and see where it goes. Oh man, yeah, you're right. It's just like cure any poison. Mm-hmm. It's like a pan it's a panacea, pancreas. I, I really didn't want to bog it down. So, yeah, no, just anti-venin. You uh, inject it or chug it. They're cured of any poisons they need to worry about. Sometimes you need to just to fucking, like, like just 
hand wave things. It's like, otherwise, this might get real fucking complicated. Yeah. And getting complicated is okay in some areas, not in all. Like, even even though I did do kind of a big list on a lot of, like, common herbs, just, they're, they're still all, they reference other normal mechanical effects. So, like, um, like, if you, um, say, like, hit somebody with, like, a, you, like, go out into the woods, you find a, a hallucinogenic plant. Well, I already wrote rules for hallucinant as just, like, a generic poison you can buy, so... Uh, you just, you know, give them... Alright, counts as a hallucinogen poison. Booyah. Done and done. Yeah, so, like, for instance, um... Snake root is a is a thing. It's a like it says like lightning poisonous herb. When brewed in a tree, can treat some symptoms. You can make it into a poultice to alleviate snake bite, and that just cures any animal venom. So like if you if you go out and you seek out an herb to do something, it just eh, it just fixes that. Like um, opium uh, counts as a painkiller for a few hours because it's obviously it's not refined. You know, there's a couple you can use as poisons. Lots of other stuff. That's assuming anybody wanted to get into herbalism, but I bet you're not in the desert. No, probably not, no. Though I think there's a... I made a, I just invented a couple, like, magical effect plants. There's gotta be one... Yeah. There's a couple that grows in deserts. Probably, like, some boots. Some shit. I don't fucking know. Desert bane. It's gonna be, sand. It's gonna be like, sand... Maybe some fucking shrubbery. Maybe a watering hole once in a while. Uh-huh. Won't be surprised if we set up near a fucking watering hole. Because Jesus fucking Christ, having to fly out for fucking water like every couple days would be terrifying. Yeah, well at the moment I'm picturing you guys are, are formally based at like Colonial HQ. Oh, okay. We're not out in the field field. Okay. No, you're not out, you're not out in the field field yet. You might have to camp out there for a while, but I'm... At the moment, I'm picturing you guys as, like, running sorties from main base. Okay, okay. Uh, because luckily, the yep. the campaigns in Africa never get bogged down in trench warfare. It's probably oh, why most of them end in a couple of years. But there's there's not really that super terrain deadlock you get in Central Europe. Nope. As in, Africa was kind of a... It was a shit show in its, in its own way, but that was more for the locals than for the actual powers. Yes. Well, I mean, like I, like I said, I told you guys, hey, watch the fuck out, because um, you're not going to have, like, an easy... This isn't, like, easy moto here, because in reality, uh, a lot of the German forces in, in Africa were beaten in, like, the first year of the war. Yeah. So, it's it's not going to be fun, but it's it's a different type of, oh, God, war sucks, and it's horrible. Speaking of, um, how much more have you gotten through um, Valkyria Chronicles? None. Absolutely none. I haven't had time to record this week. I know. I'm sad. Um, I've actually been holding back the, the last couple of episodes I got uploaded because I... Well, obviously, we're recording right now, so I'm going to have to, like, process this episode and all that. So I can't record tonight because my computer's going to be rendering a video. Mm-hmm. Gee. Um, so, like, I've got a couple in the backlog that I'm holding back that'll hopefully carry us over the weekend and we can go over. I just haven't necessarily had the time or the feeling to record in the last couple of days. I kind of had a busy front of the week, and then I'm just kind of, like, recovering from the, the back end. So like um, because like like what yeah. I've been doing is I've been playing Valkyria Chronicles like when I haven't been borrowing game because Gar- like I got Valkyria, then I borrowed Gar- God of War from a friend, then I like mm-hmm. smashed through that, went back to Valkyria Chronicles, got further, then I'm borrowing Spider Man from my friend. I'm smashed through that. I'm like I've almost platinum the game. Like I only got like a few more things I need to do and beat the game. I'll be done. And then I'm gonna go back to Valkyria Chronicles. And I don't want to get too far ahead of Omega because I want to talk about things. Mm-hmm. Like, That's fine. Hopefully, like, oh hopefully my... this, because I'm, I'm assuming we're probably not gonna with all the other stuff, because because like editor Lucky will be back on the clock, you know, tomorrow sometime, so yeah. or Sunday or whatever. So I'm assuming we're not gonna get polished up, and we're probably not gonna like run run um, Mages of War yet this weekend or anything. Like I said, we gotta like finish out our details, and we gotta find a good day to play and all that. So yeah. I will probably start back into it, um, you know, like Sunday or something. It's just uh, the, our our weekends are a little crowded. Because, like, we, we do this show, then we do Let's Talk FGO, and then we have to, like, get all that started to upload and post and everything. 
Um, but now that I'm uh, I'm free of any immediate schedule concerns, I'm t- free to keep doing work. Yeah. Mostly, I've just like, been I've been like trying. I'm, I'm. It scares me to say this, but I think I feel like I'm falling a little bit behind on my triple gotcha game run. Like I just realized, oh shit, there's only five days left in in the Halloween event in FGO. I really need to uh, to pick up some time on that. Uh, cause I don't have any extra copies of Liz right now. I'm like, I'm just now, I've just now got my first extra copy cause I've been going basically, um, node by node and I just finished clearing out the cave. So now I'm in the frozen area. Yeah. I'm, I, I did that earlier, but I didn't, I kind of, um, like didn't do the challenge quests right away on some of them. I was like working through the normal quest cause I'm like, I'm going to buy a seize or whatever. Um, and I feel, I feel like, I feel like the, the drops are a little rough. Like the currency is high. So, like, I haven't chewed through all the CEs and Ascension items in the shop yet or anything. God knows, I don't think I'm going to get anything else out of the shop besides Ascension items and CEs. That kind of sucks. But there'll be a really chill rerun next year when I don't have to worry about that shit. Except I'm yeah, probably no, going like, to have to worry about getting a spare copy of Ellie Chan's Adventure because there's only four in the shop. Fuck you. What is that? Like, I'm just going to wait till next year. Yeah, I'm not, nah, that's like... fine. I'll suck it up. I'm not going to bother drop farming. But, um, like, I... I don't know if I'm making good progress in Azure Lane. I'm still chipping away. I'm getting... St- I mean, I got most of the... I got most of the ships you can build. I think I'm missing Colorado out of the build list, but I got like I got Minneapolis, I got Washington, I got lots of Maryland's. Yeah, I'm uh, missing Washington. Yeah, so I got I got pretty lucky on the building. Um, you know, I'm so I I feel like I'm maybe not spinning that, but I mean I'm I'm through one of their their lotto things. By the way, we talked about how like AL does does their mechanics good. Like they they've got another good thing in this event where like it's. It's exactly like how FGO does a lot of events almost only there. It's a lot quicker to do because there's just no fucking fanfare. You just spend stars and get shitloads of stuff out of the pool. Um, I also like that the fact that you can get like 700 stars just by doing some fucking daily missions. Oh, yeah. No, you don't even have to play the event. It's easier that way because like the first time you do every map, you get like triple stars. So you get like if a map if beating a map would normally drop like 20 stars, you get like 60, 90, 120, you know, and more. So like you can get a fair amount from that, too. But also, yeah, no, just. Win 15 battles, you get, like, 300 stars. Build a couple of ships, you get, ships, you know, like, get 300, 300 stars. 300 stars. Like, beat one, like, main mission, hard mission, get 100, 700 stars right there. And it's like, that's very good. That helps me yeah, a lot. that's I great. So, like, that. yeah, I'm keeping that. Uh, we've talked, I talked about this in the chat. I feel, I feel a little conflicted over the Halloween costumes. Because uh, I have yeah. Nelson, and I just rolled Terror. But I don't really use them a lot. So, at the same time, I feel like, God, you know, they're on discount. It's the season. I'd really like to buy Halloween costumes. I can do it pretty easily. I just have to, um, once I'm done with, like, the event story, I can just go back to clearing regular story missions and get the gems I need. But also, it's like, but am I am I going to appreciate them? Like, yeah, I could get uh, Cleveland. I mean, I'm not tore up about Cleveland's costume, so, like, that's that's kind of why I'm like, eh. But it's like, do I, do I really want to spend the gems on this? Am I going to get my full benefit out of it? Well, see, that's the thing. Like, technically, there is no benefit except except dressing up your girl. Mm-hmm. Like in the end, that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, that's like why like, I bought I Hood's know, costume because like, I really like Hood. She was my adjutant. I didn't give Hood the ring until she could put her fancy wedding dress on. Oh, that re- that reminds me. I still haven't done that. I've had this joke in my head for like weeks to use the AR camera and uh, and take a picture of like Hood on my bed. Oh my god! Because <laughs> the framing would be perfect. I just haven't done it yet. I should do that sometime just for the jokes. Uh, cause but, AR uh, cameras are fucking hilarious. Uh, and I, I don't the, know if I'm doing good at Girls Frontline, but I never know if I'm doing good at Girls Frontline. I got the, I got the limit, the exclusive T doll, and I got yeah, the ID card because like, I wanted it. So now it. it's just like, now I'm just like doing my daily like, getting with... lanterns so I can get more tokens. Uh, no, I'm very, I'm very jaded about the tokens because most of the low rarity stuff in this gotcha is the New World shit again. And like, I already got all this trash shit. I don't want more of it. Yeah, yeah, but I'm st- I'm still sticking. Like, girl, girls' friendly is still entertaining enough to me, and I still have enough f- fun like working. And honestly, the 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 boss drops like events, or, like the special event currency, those are actually a good excuse to get out some of my my T doll teams who don't see a lot of action normally. Like, normally they're in auto battles or doing logistic missions, so it's good to get them out there. It's just like. Eh. But yeah, like, I, I feel a little like, pressure to do that. So that's one of the reasons why I've been busy. And like I said, um, well, here's an important thing, because we're coming up on the actual election day. But um, I voted earlier this week. 
Uh, so people get out there and vote. It's coming up on the day. It's important. We don't it care how you, we don't care how you vote. Just vote and um, make sure. Just like I said, pay attention to your um your local local issues because like in Florida, we had a shitload of like constitutional amendments and stuff that came up. You know, propositions which were very important to to vote on, and so that that was good. The one of them was hilarious. It was a it was two amendments which were the same thing, but it was like. So, vote for an amendment to section blah 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 to ban offshore drilling for oil and natural gas, and amend uh, this section of the Constitution to uh, ban vaping in enclosed spaces. I'm like, okay, somebody did some fucking uh, po- politics ninjutsu here to to get these as the same bullet point. Because guess what? Um, people don't want you to be able to vape in enclosed public spaces because you're just smoking. Guys, don't yep. don't don't play me. You're just smoking. It's secondhand smoke sucks. I went to college. I took. They made us take a college health class. Secondhand smoke sucks. Uh, college educated Omega here, letting you know, it's bad for you. So yeah, I'm I'm one of the like I generally I don't mind what you do in the privacy of your own home. Like if you want all your stuff to sm- stink like cigarette smoke or vape smoke or whatever, that's fine. But when you're when you're dealing with other people, that's not cool because that's other people's health you're affecting. Yeah. But I just. It was so funny to me that it was the same fucking vote. Both bad offshore drilling and bad vaping. Uh. That's how they that's how they ninjutsu these mm-hmm. things. Like that's how like they like what they did with the last um God, I can't think of the fucking name of it. Uh the budget. Yeah. Like how like they're like putting forth their budget proposal, like like last minute. People are literally scribbling things onto it, and it's just like, we need to get this approved now. And people are like Wait, hold on a goddamn minute. It's like, nope, do this it is now. This like a thousand pages. Ed, you've put liner notes? Yeah, no, that's... Yeah. Like, excuse me. But no, yeah. get out there and vote. Like, you might think that you're just one voice, but trust me. Like, when you take one voice and you add it to a thousand other ones, you fucking make a fucking difference. So, mm-hmm. go out there. And, um, Important. like, people have pointed out, it's a big deal, but voter engagement is always trash in America. Especially young people voter engagement. Don't be trash. Actually vote. Like, it's a, it's a, um, like, people are, are looking at statistics, no, seriously, like, if, if you actually care and let your voice heard, you will actually affect change, because there's a lot of you out there not voting. Yep. So this is, this is important, I think, for our audience, because I know our, our audience, at least when they responded to us, skewed kind of young, so, yeah, no, like, if, you, if you're in the States and you can vote, vote. So it's, it's, it's just an important civic duty to do. Just take your time and vote. Preferably, you should have voted early because that's usually way more convenient. But um, hey, if you want to vote on election day and you've got the time for it, go for it. They really should make election, election day, day a fucking because... national holiday, though. Like, I'm sure it would be annoying for lots of shit to shut down when you're like, "But I voted already. I'm done." But seriously, like, people need to be able to get out there and vote. <laughs> anyway, um, so that was just that was one of the things I did, and I mentioned this in a couple other places. I mentioned, I think, it like one of the the story times I did where I was like, hey, if I sound kind of awkward today, it's because I just had my teeth cleaned at the dentist today. So, like, there's been somebody with a sharp object in my mouth earlier today. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of baggage about going to the dentist, but whatever. No big deal. I got my teeth cleaned. It's fine. But it just, that was that was a thing I had to do, and it, uh, that and the voting were kind of slightly earlier in the day than I normally do stuff, so I had to, like, rotate my sleep schedule around a little. I talked before about how I'm not a morning person so even if it's doing those slight adjustments it usually takes me a little bit to like get comfortable with there so that's kind of why i've been a little out of sorts later this week but hey every every day of the week i did record story time <laughs> which was actually a lot of fun um one just because uh, oh my god lovecraft was such a a weirdly verbose writer like that's where a lot of the, the classics, like I didn't, I didn't actually read Squamous in any of the stories I did, but that's where I was like Squamous, Cyclopean, lots of other stuff, L- big fancy words, really fun to read sometimes. I I tried to keep a straight face, but there were a couple times where I I was like smiling reading some of these sentences. Also, the other thing is, especially in a lot of his earlier shorter works that I read, uh, you see a lot of tropes that make up a lot of that classic cosmic horror fiction show up, like um the Nameless City is one. Um, the original Dagon is like really, really telling of his themes. Uh, and if you had some time, you should check him out. Lucky, did you listen to any of them, or have you been a busy boy this week? I've been a busy boy. 
it's fair. Like one of the reasons though, I busy, but like I literally lost like one of my full days. This was on my one too. Um, I'm like, you never played Undertale, did you? No, didn't get around to it yet. <laughs> well, like for those of you who have played Undertale, um, like last that was like what Wednesday? I want to say. Yeah, Wednesday, uh, Toby Fox um, on Twitter and other areas released another game called Deltarune. And specifically, it is a game intended for those who have played Undertale. And boy, howdy, I see why and I am super fucking like hyped for whatever comes next. Apparently, it's going to be more episodic in nature. Um, and this first one is just chapter one. I'm not going to really spoil any details, but if you loved Undertale and you want to do some more stuff like that, go to Deltarune.com or go check out the Deltarune Twitter and you'll find a link to it. It's free, like no money. You just download it. You, If you want to buy something, you can buy the soundtrack, which is also amazing. Like, uh, like as everyone should know, uh, Toby Fox has been in the uh, music making bit for quite a while, going back all the way to Homestuck. And the frick his fucking um hack of Earthbound, so been there. But go check it out. Go enjoy the adventure. It was great because when I when you first downloaded, you know he put that that thing of like don't talk to anyone for twenty about it for twenty four hours. I was like okay sure cool, but it didn't occur to me that I should record my playthrough. So my honest reaction to like I was done and I literally kicked myself and like I should have fucking recorded that. We're always God like that. Damn we always it. Do that stuff. The what? I said we're always like that. We always be thinking that stuff. Like, yeah. Like I couldn't because I was like I was just like so excited to play the game. I was like I'm excited. <laughs> uh, I shake my fist at myself. I shake my. But let's see here. I think that's about it. Um, actually, like something like. Uh... Video game wise, also like freaking Red Dead Redemption Two just came out. I've been hearing good things about that. Also, um, the new Call of Cthulhu game came out. Like, I didn't know it came out. Otherwise, I probably would have got it. So now I have to make this executive decision if I'm gonna get Red Dead Redemption Two or that. My plan is I might just get like Call of Cthulhu for like Omega for like his birthday slash Christmas because those are like really close to fucking together. And you know, just wait till I get him like strong to harm him into moving up here, and I'll just play it then. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, say strong, anyway. really strong on my wallet. Yeah. yeah, I don't need to be convinced. As much as that would be kind of, <laughs> probably be kind of a clusterfuck, but yeah. it would be way better for the channel. Oh yeah. Uh, just remember that you don't. There's, there's no don't gift on PC because that's not a guarantee of anything. Nope. My poor old beat up machine. That'll be, that'll be someday. Well, I'll. I mean, like, it's the the thing is, it's perfectly serviceable for doing shit for this. It's like, but I can't like play super high end games a lot of the time. The sum of that is just because I don't know if I got like I got all my drivers and shit sorted out. Computers are it's frustrating sometimes. Uh, by the way, though, we do have some breaking news. Um, in Gotcha Games, one of our uh, posters and one of our mods, Juforce, has just posted a, a clip from the official Azure Lane uh, Discord confirming that Live 2D is coming to Atago in her summer costume. Um, oh, oh my. Buddy. Oh my! So uh, yeah, guess what? I'm not spending those gems on Halloween costumes. Sorry, ladies. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> give to buy a new swimsuit in October <laughs> or November. Now. That's right, it's November. It's November second, actually. Like I've already like I bought like the swimsuits. I haven't bought I bought the swimsuits for both Takao and Otago. I also have them for Hood and Prince Eugene and mm-hmm. Haman. But yeah, so that's uh that's a big seller right there. So I think I know what I'm doing with my gems. Yay! I think gems. I need to. I might just have to drop some more money because they still have that. They have the currently they have the discount for um the bond rings, the promise rings. I'm like, yep. I kind of want them. Oh, Qua says that um uh, that Call of Cthulhu is kind of slow at the beginning and kind of mediocre. Well, I said, those people aren't me. Well, yeah, like, and also there's like, I mean, yeah, well, hold on. Let me let me spin y'all a story. Uh, we spent, hold on, let me check the timer. Uh, all right, so it was one hour when voice left. We are now at two hours. So uh, we spent probably at least half of that hour, if not more, talking about Mages of War, which is a tabletop game I wrote. Uh, I got into tabletops running Call of Cthulhu and running Eclipse Phase. 
Um, so yeah, no, like um, cosmic horror stuff. That's like that's a very early touchstone for me in a lot of stuff. Like I said, I had a lot of fun reading a lot of HPL's old original, you know, short stories. Uh, I read a lot of like um, various uh, Cthulhu mythos type fiction when I was younger. So like. I don't I don't care if like to normal people it's slow and mediocre like is it still a good cosmic horror experience which I would perfectly okay with uh, let's see here let's see I IGN gave it an 8.6 out of 10 I don't know like who I would call a good review source like honestly yeah it's hard some some of these days I know I, I IGN usually seems like they're okay but they also had that problem earlier this year where they had a uh, a reviewer who very clearly plagiarized his review. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, also, quite frankly, I some reviews here. feel... Everybody, everybody loves to talk about Lovecraft as a racist. I mean, yes, but no. I'm, the thing about Lovecraft is I, he died very young. I think he was only in his 30s. And oh, a man. lot of his more, what we call controversial, you know, problematic... Our watch word again works are from when he was in his like early twenties. Uh, so he's he's kind of one of those guys who never afraid about that. Also, uh, no, actually, you're you're wrong about that. Saying that if it's not white, he's afraid of it. Um, Lovecraft was a huge uh, Egypt taboo. Uh, he loved ancient Egypt, and even in the way those guys paint themselves, they're not white. Um, Lovecraft though was very specific. He to us in modern America, he's racist because he had he had weird concerns about like um, a cultural degradation. Um, so his weird neurotic opinion of African Americans was that they were kind of like culturally bankrupt because they didn't have any culture, and that freaked him out. Um, I th- I would agree if if you th- listen to that and think, well, that's kind of selfish of you, HPL. Like I know I agree. Like that's a that's a weird way to take that particular weirdness of his neurotic. Um, and yeah, a lot of his, a lot of his stories do have undertones of like, um, you could, you could say that they were about racial stuff, like in your background. I think actually though, like Shadow Over Innsmouth is supposed to be a a metaphor for mental health history. Um, because the twenties were a really bad time for mental health and they thought a lot of it was hereditary. Um, I'm trying to think what was his... Uh, one of HPL's parents, was it his father or his mother? They had some kind of like mental condition, like they had a mental breakdown or they committed suicide or something. So he was, he was like super concerned that like poor mental health was like, um, uh, genetic basically it was hereditary. So that's, that's a lot of what the metaphor, I think what it was intended, but obviously without that kind of specific context, you can also be like, well, also there could be some very unsettling things. And so, I feel like a lot of people lazily write off uh, HBL was just racist. And, like, there's certainly some tones of that, but I think there's a more deeper and complex, like, study of him being a neurotic guy in there. Well, things are, are very suddenly what they seem at first glance. Yeah. But you know what you say, I always say? Let people enjoy things. He's yeah. dead. He's in the ground. Oh. Can't really affect his work. His stuff... Still lives on. It is an inspiration for many, but even creates video games. So you know what? What the fuck ever. Yeah. Let's get. Let's just get on with our mind fucking. And that said, like, um, you, if you want to, like, it, like I said, I just read a lot of his early works. There really are not racist tones in there. Like, oh, you might argue, oh, is he like he mentions one guy as being the quote unquote mad Arab, but I think that's just. How, how would you how would you describe a guy from from Arabia? He's an Arab, and also he happens to be crazy. And then there are non mad Arabs who tell you not to go places and do things. Uh, so yeah, no, it's it's, but a lot of it is just you're hanging out and doing stuff. Um, a lot of times he interacts with Europeans. Uh, one character in like the characters in the Hound are English. Some of them are New England. Um, some of them are not identified at all, like just random guys, maybe European. Yeah, the the uh, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to read the original Call of Cthulhu, besides just it being long. Is yes, there are actually certain segments of that which could argue that's like, um, yeah, that would be problematic to read in this certain context. 
When did Love freaking he live again? Like what era? Well, and I'll give you his birth and death dates. Howard Phillips Lovecraft, born 1890, died 1937. Wow. So he died when he was 46. As I said, like, like specifically with technology and him not getting it, do you know how many people were actually scared of technological advances? Well, yeah, back no, in the he day? he was in a vi- what uh, now we can look back and say is a very telling time for like science and and mathematics. Um. Uh, but also at the actual time period, it was very confusing. That was when uh you know a lot of a lot of physicists were developing the early theories of quantum mechanics. Um. Um. And uh, this like, was, was the period of Einstein developing then. relativity. So uh, lots of advanced mathematics were being developed. So this was where we break a lot of ground that in our modern era was like, this is the underbelly of physics. This is like the foundation of our modern understanding of our physical world. But back then it was very confusing and uncertain. And it, it um, well, we tired of like, um, actually talking in chat about like how um, Lovecraft was like agoraphobic, which I'm pretty sure is accurate. Like he, he had weird phobias and stuff about all kinds of things. So like... To him, a lot of like is this agoraphobic fear of crowds. I forget. Uh, agoraphobic is the the open spaces fear, the like being outside. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, rever- okay. the reverse of claustrophobia. Okay. Claustrophobia, you don't like to be enclosed in. Agoraphobia is like I don't like to be outside in open spaces. Uh, okay. Agoraphobia, actually, etymologically, is uh, from the Greek word for marketplace, agora. Oh. Uh, is it Greek or is it Latin? I think it's Greek. Sometimes it's hard to tell with these words. We. In English, we really we we beat up a couple languages with shit like automobile and television, which are, by the way, in case you don't know, those are those are mixed roots. They're from both uh, Greek and Latin at the same time, uh, because I'll English is terrible like that. Okay. But yeah, we we beat up a lot of languages. But yeah, so like he he had uh, to him the the revelations that we were going through about the nature of like physics and mathematics was like. Oh my God! We truly live in an uncaring universe where we don't matter, you know, like like pocket nihilism stuff. Um, and then he spun that off into a very telling um, genre of stories, basically inventing a lot of our modern cosmic horror. And you see a lot of these themes there, like, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's funny. Like Axe actually uh, suggested to me that I like read them in like a snarky manner, and I'll admit there were a couple times. Where if I didn't, I didn't want to start that way because I didn't, I didn't feel that energy going in, right? Like I just wanted to start with a simple plane project. That's why I didn't do any like extra audio editing except for the end of the hound. Uh, I don't know if anybody's actually listened to that, but uh, pay attention to the end. I did do a special effect, uh, but I didn't like go whole hog. Like well, something I wanted to do was to try and like figure out like a cassette tape sound, but that would have required like doing certain setups to like insert a background noise audio track as well as also the other recording. So I'm like. Ah, I'm just kind of. This is just kind of me cruising and taking it easy and trying out this concept. So I don't want to. I don't want to go that far yet. But there were definitely times reading these where if I didn't start with that effect, I definitely like a, a couple of the were like just either like I said I was smiling and oh that well that's just so greatly written, or like, um, some of them are just like yeah huh sure sure buddy, like, <laughs> but. So some of them are very, like very logical like, thing. Like I remember, like uh, I just remember, like back in the early '90s. Do you know how many people were saying that the fucking internet wouldn't take off? Yeah, that was just a fucking fad. Uh huh. People feel that way about new stuff all the time. Yeah, it's like that's nothing new. I've been like I've been watching some documentaries um about the past couple decades. Um, so like, like when MTV started, people were like, people aren't gonna watch music videos all day, and then they did. And then oh, they MTV. stopped because MTV switched to music videos. videos on. Yeah, but you know, like there, there's a lot of like, uh, like definition there that were like people were just not going to get. Like, why would you watch music on TV? It, there's infinite music on the radio, but yeah. Um, but no, like if you if you read his earliest works, what Lovecraft's kind of concerns are are like almost like kind of like a a paranoia that we are not alone in this universe, which is persistent. We've seen that a lot. Like, alien invasion stories are for forever. There's a famous quote that 
I can't remember who said it. It might have been Lost Transit. It's like there's there's only two choices. Like either we are alone in this universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. I don't know who said that. Let me check. Oh, I was already googling it. But if you want to Google it, I can. Oh, you you keep talking. All right. Um. Oh, it's Arthur C. Clarke. Yeah, a very famous sci-fi author. Yep, super famous. Uh, but yeah, so like, if you read the earliest stories, a lot of his themes are basically like the concern that mankind are are not alone in this universe, or let alone al- alone on this planet, because you know he w- he was a fairly modernist. He like accepted a lot of our ideas, like the Earth's been here a long, long time, and then he was like. Guys, that's really freaky, and it is if you think about it. Like, if you think about, hey, the Earth's been here for billions of years, right? What happened in those billions of years that we don't know about? And people are just like, uh, I don't know. And Lovecraft is like, guys, you should be more freaked out about that. You don't know what happened. That's a, that's what a, a lot of his stories are fundamentally. They break down to implications of time, place, and, like, how humans relate to it. Like, the original Dagon, it's just... Some guy is in a rowboat. He runs into a a gross island. He basically it's it's said to be an island upheaval. It's supposed to be some seafloor that jetted out. He walks through a, a desert of black mud. He notes, and then he finds at the end an obelisk, which has clearly been carved by some tools. And that's like, okay, that's really weird. There's a there's a tooled thing sticking out of this thing that I said was on the seafloor, and it has freakish seafloor creatures on it. And then, oh my god. There's a giant fish man, and then he runs off screaming. And then the island disappears. But that's like, that's that's the Ur Lovecraft story. Is that like, hoop to do, just minding my own business, living my life. I'm a modern man of science. Oh, fuck, everything I understand is wrong. I, and I mean, maybe because he was a little neurotic himself, I think um, L- Lovecraft underestimates the human condition. Uh, because actual in reality, humans are super elastic. Like we're a, uh, it's 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 freaky how much you can do to humans, and we can become functional afterward. Um, so like like a lot of his stories end up with people they're they're writing their notes before they commit suicide or something, you know, because they can't they can't deal with the implication, right? That I think is like yeah. a little overused, but. But that's how Lovecraft felt, because, like I said, I'm pretty sure he was a neurotic, like, freaked out guy. So he was like, God, can you even imagine? Um, but other than that, like, a lot of it is is good, solid, just, yeah, how do you deal with the sudden implication that you actually ran into something, you know, antediluvian, something that's older than you, something that's freakier than you something that doesn't fit your understanding of modern science right because that's what he was going through he was going through these upheavals like are you telling me that the universe is inherently random quantum mechanics and that's like that's really freaky i'm not sure what to think about what i thought about life and so he translated a lot of that experience to his stories again i think that's one of those things of like something that we might take for granted nowadays of how elastic we are because i think we're more or less like nowadays just because we have access to more information we understand how things work more it's like we have better like mental health care and all that crazy stuff right. it's like I we think there's aren't a, at- there's a one thing i don't know what movie it was or something but there was some kind of motion picture where they showed like um i think it was a shot of a of a train coming dead on at the camera and supposedly oh, yeah, ran from the fucking camera. Right. Supposedly, people, yeah, people, people ran, ran from, from the, the theater or supposedly stories about like ladies fainting. Yeah. Because movies were so oh oh no, that's psycho, I think, um by Hitchcock. There were people like fainting in the theater, supposedly. Yeah. Uh, now that doesn't happen. Because people are just yeah. people are used to that's information like, so being again, displayed like, to them in new ways. Like like one of those things I try to tell people a lot is try to imagine what the writer was going through in their time when things were written or created because I mean, that's, a, that's a fair thing to say i mean technically that's against death of the author like you should a uh, work should stand on its own outside of authorial context but at the same time, the if, same you're, time. if you're looking for like why stuff is the way it is authorial context is super important yeah because it's like but, okay so why is why are we freaked out about this because we're experiencing like a like honestly like Lovecraft is is very for his time period very science literate. He talks about like like I said about like long periods of time, lots of ancient languages. Um, 
you know, missing links, you know, talking about like Neanderthal man, um, Piltdown man, some of our like, you know, human ancestors and stuff like he was very scientifically learned for the time, but he was in a time period when when science was was evolving and changing a lot. And I think it it freaked him out a little. Also, um, there are a lot of themes of like uh, decay of society, not necessarily like a, some of it's like a moral decay. And some of that he might have got from uh, Robert Chambers, who wrote The King in Yellow, uh, which is said to be a big inspiration to Lovecraft. That was a lot of, like, decadence and decay of society were some of Chambers' big themes. Um, entropy, almost. But, um, like, a lot of it has to do with just, like, the nature of life. And if you look at the time period he was in, the turn of the, 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 turn of the, the 20th century was kind of a rough, weird period. Mm-hmm. Hello, Industrial Revolution. Industrial Revolution, the First World War, um, the Prohibition era was in America was kind of weird. Oh yeah. So yeah, no, like, like there's a, there's a lot of weird upheaval stuff that that if you were say a nervous little man from New England, you might you might be a little weirded out by. And and he kind of carries that to his works, and it's it's there. I mean, he. You want to talk about, like, Mythopoeia, the creation of a mythology? Lovecraft did that. You want to talk about, you know, like, setting a genre? Like, Lovecraft is one of the pillars of the actual cosmic horror genre. You can, you could make a legit claim that he invented a genre of storytelling. And, yeah. and are some of his, like I said, like, I'm okay calling some of his works problematic. Like, I don't know if he conveyed his intent or if, if there weren't other stuff, which is wasn't obvious to him that comes through in his writing, and like, yeah, no, some of the like the, the one chapter of of the one section of the actual Call of Cthulhu, the story, yeah, no, that's like in the time that was like nobody bad and Eilish. Now it's like, all right, that's kind of that's kind of racist. Like this idea that like that that certain minorities in America don't have anything else to rely on, so they turn to the uh, worship of dark cosmic powers. All right, okay. We don't need to go that far. Uh, that said, like I like I said, like um, like the Hound, um, the 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 supernatural force is based and the the weirdness is based in Holland. It's like based in Europe. Um, the festival is set in New England, uh, in Kingsport actually, one of the famous Lovecraft towns, Kingsport, Arkham. Um, I think the festival actually is the first mention of Miskatonic University, a very important Lovecraft touchstone. Uh, Nameless City takes place somewhere in Arabia, I think, or maybe North Africa, somewhere around there. Um, and I'm pretty sure Nyarlathotep and Azathoth take place not on this Earth, because there there's apocalypses in those places. So yeah, no, like, like he, I, like I said when I started this conversation, I think some people like to, like to lazily say, oh, Lovecraft is super racist. Because that's like just an easy way to say that, like, listen, don't, don't, don't come at me with any of this racist, racist nonsense. I know he was racist, but I was talking about the other work, so like, don't. It's kind of like a like a political dodge. Like, don't, don't come at me with some kind of argument or something. I'm a perfectly liberal and functional modern human. Hmm. You don't need, you don't need to like, 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 um, it's become a loaded term. Like, I, th- like, um, it's another one of those weird words we talked about. Like, I joked about the problematic earlier. Like, what people say, virtue signaling. Which, in a dictionary definition, oh yeah, that's totally a thing. That's totally a thing that people do. Um, I, it's funny, I'm pretty sure it's mostly people right-leaning who call out left-leaning people as being virtue signaling, even though I'm pretty sure the act of calling, making those call-outs about virtue signaling is virtue signaling. Just a funny yeah. thought, guys. Um, but it's, it's one of those things that, like, if you look at a concept at a high level, it's like, oh yeah, no, that's totally a thing humans do, is is now having a name for it, like, turning it into, like, another thing entirely? Probably. Probably turning it into a, com- a complex thing, a problematic thing, but... But, yeah, no, like, I feel like some people... It's... It goes against our philosophy of just let people like things. Like, <laughs> there are sometimes when you can't like things without qualifying it in our society, which you shouldn't really have to qualify it, but I feel like that's what some people do when they talk about Lovecraft. But the... Depending on where... What section of his works are written... His his weird his weird racism is not necessarily like an obvious thing in some works and and like I said I feel like some people just lazily like ah oh, well that's the only critique they level 
the like I said, the real critique is that his work very quickly gets very formulaic, and like we said, to a modern reader, some of it's kind of funny. Like it was a lot of a lot of his works rely on, even though that's still a modern thing. Like you know, um, we talked about Hitchcock earlier. That was Hitchcock's big thing. You know, not seeing the monster is scarier than seeing it. Um, Lovecraft it was. lives and dies Hitchcock. by not telling you what the thing looks like precisely. But there are that's times when he just he doesn't write a description at all. It's just like because these are mostly in first person narration. It's like I could not describe the unmentionable, unnameable thing. And like, okay, buddy, good for you. <laughs> Top quality writing. Um, Alfred Hitchcock was the person I was trying to think of who was actually you know kind of a shit person, but still you know like still like one of the um fucking uh... defined cinematography. Yeah, defined cinematography. Mm-hmm. It's like probably because fucking... he was an he was an old white dude when he made movies. Yep, and he was a dick. But guess what? He made some fine, fine damn good movies at the time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's my that's my that's my Lovecraft thoughts. Um, all right, we're at almost two and a half hours. That was a lot of Lovecraft thoughts. Like yeah, I wasn't like expecting to get quite out there on that, but I figured to talk about it a little bit. And I mean. We've talked about this before, but Love, Lovecraft's kind of important to us. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Well, it's more important to you, but yes. I have like it has rubbed up on rubbed off on me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could talk more. We could we could segue back to tabletop games. I could talk about how much I love Knights Black Agents. R.I.P. Me. I want to play it. I really do. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff like, to play. But yeah, it's we just, have a lot. The of funny thing play, is like. that 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 uh, it literally Knights Black Agents. It's the entire campaign is written. All the notes are in. You guys had characters for it. There's a first session that's recorded on the channel. I actually promoted earlier when I was talking about some, like, if you want to check us out doing spooky on-theme stuff. Um, the first session is recorded and uploaded, so anybody could literally go back into it and look at it any time. And we just didn't. <laughs> uh, such a uh, shame. It was. Like, if we would like to start over from zero, maybe, like, try making some new characters and go into that same story again, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. You also don't have to because I have all the campaign notes. But yeah, if you wanted to start over, I could do that too. Well, like I said, I still got all my stuff. I got my work. maps. I got my campaign notes. I got a. I did a lot of like supplementary stuff for Knights Black Agents because um, if you don't know what we're talking about, Knights Black Agents is a um, hopefully famous. Uh, it's an award-winning game for sure by uh, Kenneth Height, and it is a spy thriller game meets vampires. Uh, only you, uh, you're in character. You don't necessarily know vampires involved, but out of character, it's it's very much a like, yeah, you you know, there's going to be a supernatural twist here, or is it even supernatural? Um, because it's got a very extensive section on how to build your quote unquote vampire, and you can do all kinds of of, of you know different vampire fiction emulation. You can have like viral vampires. You can have classic vampires. You can have even more classic original Slavic folklore vampires who are even weirder. Like your Bram Stokas, oh, that's all weird stuff. So you can like, you can customize your vampire fiction to suit your needs of the story, and it's just <coughs> excuse me, I coughed suddenly. Um, just in general, it's just a very well written system to like handle this kind of like deep conspiracy investigation spy thriller shit, and also fucking vampires. Um, and there are a couple of really good actual plays I've listened to of, of Night's Black Agents. One of them is uh, Tribes of Tokyo by Real Playing Public Radio. Uh, one of their big classics. It's set in Tokyo, Japan. Well, mo- and they go to other parts of Japan, but it's mostly Tokyo, so that's, like, really cool. Um, and then another one I just talked about this today is uh, another favorite actual play podcast of mine, Knights of the Night, um, is just started one that they're running through. And it's it's just interesting to kind of see the connections and stuff, and everybody handles the vampires a little bit different, everybody handles the characters a little bit different, and it's just, it's cool. And my campaign was called Knight's Pale Agents, for reasons which the players don't even know. The players don't even know, guys. I can't even tell you. Nope. But that was a lot of fun to write that, so I hope to get back to it. But I wrote, like I said, I wrote a lot of fluff background on it, like a lot of, like, uh, like cheat sheets and stuff for people to be able to make characters easily, um, lots of slang and stuff, which I called um, appropriately pocket lint, basically extra fluff stuff you can throw in there to make your character <laughs> feel more alive. I remember that. Yeah. Just uh, just lots of fun stuff, because it's cool to do spy talk and stuff. It is! I love the I love the big list of acronyms you had. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, just spy, like, spy mm-hmm. words. 
was great. I can't remember any of them because it's been forever, but I remember yeah, the list. I still got them. I um, I can actually I can put that I can put that link out because it's a Google Doc I have with the video. So if people want to uh, check it out, check I, it out. Rack up them views. I can dump that in the, NBA glossary. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, one one I always will remember is Fido. Um, fuck it, drive on. Yeah, I thought that one was fucking amazing. Like, that's uh, that's British police slang. <laughs> <laughs> For when when a patrol car sees a situation that they don't want to deal with it, fight out. Fuck it, drive on. Uh, also, code ninety nine, a tea break. <laughs> but yeah, no, I found a lot. I found a lot of of really interesting, useful terms from a lot of like classic stuff. I just bonked my microphone really hard. My bad. But like a a lot of stuff you would know if you were actually a cop, a spy, a criminal. You know, an a military officer. You'd know some of these terms. And uh, Gumshoe's a really interesting system that, sadly, I've never been able to play extensively or run extensively. But it has this idea of, like, um, investigative abilities, where you have a pool, and just having a point at all means you get core clues related to that pool. Uh, if you have a point in pharmacy, and it is vital for the investigation that you get a clue related to pharmacy, like you track down some kind of vampire suppressant drug, you get it automatically. Don't have to spend any points, don't have to do anything. But if you want to get extras, stuff that like, makes it easier for you to solve the mystery or easier to resolve the mystery, you can spend points. You could like say, okay, I have a point of pharmacy. I'm going to spend it. I'm going to replicate the vampire suppressing drug so I can put it in a dart and we can suppress this vampire so he doesn't kick our ass. <laughs> because otherwise the vampire is going to kick your ass, guys. He really is. Oh, my God. The, the, uh, just the general vampire power horse shit you can do in this game. Whew. We never got to fight a vampire. We never even discovered the vampires. We were on our way, but we didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't even do the the thing that they say to try and do, like session one, which is bump headlong into the supernatural. But I was going there. We were, we're going to there. fight something supernatural. But then we ended, and it was sad. All we did was like is like Shanghai and some fucking skateboarder kids are thinking that they might get on the famous video, so they should give us information. Uh -huh. God damn it. Yeah, I mean, you you had a couple of like weird guys. You were like, we're gonna track these guys, but you didn't you didn't close into anything suspicious yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, you you. I don't think you even found officially the first node of the conspiramid, which, by the way, is the other great thing in Knights Black Agents. They tell you to make a conspiramid, a conspiracy pyramid. You literally fill out the rungs of this pyramid with like the bottom row is like street level people. And then the next row is the guys above them, and you go up the pyramid until you find the one big bad who's behind it all. Dracula. Or whatever. But yeah, no. So, like, that's that's a great element to, like, drive your campaign and just perfect conspiracy theory shit, right? Like, literally, it gives you a pyramid diagram that the players are probably making to fill out what the sections of this pyramid are. It's great. Uh, and I actually, there is actually a literal conspiracy document. I just can't show it to anybody because it's my version. <laughs> but I still have it. Uh, let me actually double check. How long are my campaign notes for this? Uh, it's funny, actually. It's been over a year since I w wrote and ran this because I remember I wrote a lot of this. I remember exactly why I put so much effort into writing this game and why I wrote so much of it. I wrote this during the hurricane when my power and then later my internet was out and i just had oh. a couple of tv shows i had saved on like my phone and then once the power came back on i had access to some the my full actual play archive i think i actually had some of the tribes of tokyo uh actual plays on my mp3 player at the time and so i had nothing but time and literal notebooks my earliest notes are in a notebook um and that's why there are 51 pages of campaign notes because I had a lot of time on my hands to sketch this out. And I'll probably read that over later for my own edification. But yeah. <laughs> God, Night Spike Agents is cool. But also, other stuff is cool. Mages of War is cool. I wrote it. We post lots you of that. Check those out. We'll fucking, uh, we'll fucking publish it. We'll make money off it. Woo. Yeah, someday. Someday I'll figure out. That's like a whole... The whole publishing thing is a whole different thing. I'll need to like, figure out layouts and stuff. But we could totally do that. Organize. I was actually it. thinking, like, maybe we should like try reserving a domain name for eventually we can have we eventually have a website. 
yeah, I mean, they're not a super expensive. We could probably do that. I just, I, I don't well, really remember gonna, a lot of my HTML. Yeah, me neither. And I don't feel like I don't want to put on another goddamn hat. Yeah, uh, we we could probably between the two of us probably jury rig something. But yeah, I don't know what we'd really do with it right now. Well, we could, honestly, though. there'd be ads. We'd probably like have links to like other content. We'll put up like news updates. We'll have links to videos and section to download audio. Like I was thinking about, it, but probably embed our fucking twitters into it. It'd be like it'd be like it. It basically be a thing where people can go and get news on us and maybe like access things, cause like um, and like you can even do like Patreon in- integration into websites mm-hmm. nowadays. Yeah. So I was like, I was thinking about it, cause you know we're dealing with the whole fucking um mm-hmm. YouTube thing. Yes, right now we need so, to we need to expand our monetization uh platforms. So I was thinking like if we get a website, start like putting like some not over overt ads. Like here, like 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 side tangent, I don't mind ads on my websites. I mind ads when I'm trying to do something and all of a sudden there's something blaring in my yeah, ear. No, video ads are bad. Um I think most of Google ish like just if you because obviously guess what? We have a Google AdSense account that that's not doing anything right now. Mm-hmm. But we could we could set up Google AdSense ads. Probably. I could probably figure that out because I got that account. So yeah, no, we start doing things, but so yeah, that's another thing where we like Like honestly, I would love to hire just like a person who was good at editing and web design. Mm-hmm. It's like boom, do the stuff for us. But we can't pay people yet. Yeah. I mean Sigh. we we can. I don't know if we could pay them anything fair yet. Oh no! Well, see, here's the thing: once you start actually employing people, like I, I don't know, like that well, yeah, at some at some point, different. we do we would need to we would need to flip over. Like right now on Patreon, I count us I I count us quote unquote as an it's me as an individual, and I just happen to also scoot some of the money to Lucky. Um, <laughs> we would have to switch up to being like, okay, I'm an actual we're an actual company now. We have company rules. We pay people this much. And like we have not, these we're kinds not big of stuff. enough for that yet, but like no. eventually. But once you start taking people on, yeah, that's kind of the thing you have to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, uh, also the other thing I was gonna say was uh, Legend of the Five Rings is really cool. I want to play it, but as I said, we got a lot on our fucking. No, yeah, we got some stuff to work through, and like, um, I, I'm I'm okay letting that game line mature a little bit. Like, I mean, I haven't necessarily stop to just making characters for it because that's how much I love the game. That's what I do with every new game. I make like five characters and I tell players, hey, you can play these characters. I made. they're like, now nah, I'll make my own character. I'm like, that's cool. You do you. <laughs> I've done that so many times. I mean, honestly, like, that's fine. The whole point of me making characters is one, so I can walk you guys through making characters because guess what? If you don't understand it, you can't teach it. Uh, and two, then there's always the option like, I, not that that's ever been a serious problem for our group, but... That's very much a thing I know about with some other groups in some other cases, and maybe people we run into in the future, because who knows, we'll we'll maybe get people in from the community, because I was just thinking to myself, also, if I was going to run the other five rings, I'd like a couple extra people, but I only, I only got, like, two people right now. I don't actually that he was interested in playing some stuff. Yeah. I don't know, remember what, though, exactly. Well, first and foremost, he said he was interested in um, Material Girl, but that's that development has stalled temporarily. Oh, yeah, because we got a bunch of other stuff to play. Yeah, and I, like oh. I said, I just haven't felt like refining it yet. But someday, like, it's like everything I write, I'll get to. It's like Major of the War probably took me, like, two years total to get, like, complete feature, complete polish. Like, it, it's been functional for a long time, but, like, it did not necessarily have all the elements it has. And it technically doesn't have all the elements it maybe should have yet. Like, there's probably some extra fluff background on stuff I could write. Um, if especially if we were gonna sell it, I would have to like write out fluff sections because there's gonna come a time when people who would read the book and play it would not be able to like literally get on their computer and talk to me and ask questions. Um, but it, yeah, it's been so to me like the act of something being like I don't feel like polishing this up right now. That's that's not death for a project. That's just well, I'll just wait until I feel like it, and then I'm like, oh, that's right, I have that thing sitting in the back. I'll go finish that. That's just how I feel about stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, we could 
we have a we have a fairly diverse audience. We could probably get some people. I feel I feel a little awkward going to like the the quote unquote the fans and being like, oh hey, you're part of the community. Hey, join us in with stuff. Uh, just, also, I'll be honest. The talking about monetization, the the money maker to me is like, you know, usually like actual play podcasts they charge people for that. Um, I don't know if people I don't know if yet people will be into that, but that could definitely be a thing to run like monthly games. But just like, I'm not a I'm. Like on the one hand, I have a pract- I have a very practical site that has practical concerns. But on the other hand, it's just like, fuck, I just want a couple extra people to run some games with, man. Like, just I want more people because I like to run games. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah, so but like I said, I'm I'm okay letting the 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 game line of L five R mature because I'm not gonna stop loving that and wanting to run it. I'm actually considering, I'm thinking about maybe buying some of the physical dice so I can roll them on my own. Not that I have to because we have a dice bot for that, but just um. Like, especially as, as a roll-and-keep system, as GM being able to have, like, secret rolls where I can roll and I can decide I can keep some dice that maybe aren't great, but not let you know that I did that. Uh, that's always fun. Uh, more importantly, I mean, there's a couple of budgetary concerns I got coming up as the, the year kind of rounds out. I want to make sure I have some money free to re-up my PlayStation Plus subscription, because then I otherwise I lose all my games. That's a lot of games. It's a lot of games. Actually, a lot of games that I like. PlayStation Plus games going to be? Oh, actually, that's right. It's a new month. Switching over here. I've here. been playing Mafia Three. I, at some point, I think I want to buy a, a what you call it, a season pass on Destiny Two. At some point, so I can play all the stuff. Never PlayStation Plus. Let's see here. Oh, sweet, we do got something. Let's see here. Oh, they announced already. Oh my God, we're getting Yakuza Kiwami. Nice. Yes. Cool. And let's see here, uh, Bullet Storm Full Clip Edition. But oh my god, I was like so on the fence about getting fucking Yakuza Kiwami. Well, that's great. Well, now I don't play. fucking have to. Yeah, no, that's great. That's, that's a lot of the beautiful thing about PlayStation Plus. Yeah, oh, you just get stuff. Uh, so that's why it's important to me to re up. I also I recently watched um, Achievement Hunters uh, Let's Watch playthrough of of Uncharted Four. So I've also been thinking maybe I want to buy the Nathan Drake collection on PS4 sometime, and we could turn that into Let's Plays. So I'm thinking uh, about that. I, I also I'm not gonna let you, like no, I'm not, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna let you do that. Like on, like I refuse. You have to wait till I am the. Okay, all right, that's fair. Uncharted. In that case, I'll Uncharted, hold that off because I know there's a couple yeah. games coming out soon. Like I don't, I don't know when Ace Combat comes out, but I know it's coming soon, and there's videos of it. And I'm like, fuck, I want to play Ace Combat. Um, and then there's a couple of like, stuff Uncharted, at the beginning of the year. Um, Uncharted is such an important series to me. That, that's like, not, I, that's like, cool, I, and that's like Uncharted was the thing. I, despite being a huge PlayStation PlayStation guy for years, I got a PS2 for Christmas one year, and then I was in. I was like locked in. This is my console now. Um, so thanks Sony for making great consoles for years. Um, but Uncharted was something I never really jumped to. Um, mm-hmm. but I like I said, I like I've I've seen people basically let's play the whole of four, and I'm like I watch it again. I'm like. Yeah, no, this seems like a lot of energy. This would be a lot of fun to check out these games, especially now that I, kn- I know they have very good remasters of the original mm-hmm. three. So I'd love to just jump in and get in it. But if you are if you were like, nah, don't do that, I'm like, okay, I can wait. I'll wait. I've waited for years. Like, like Uncharted was, like, literally the first game I got for my PS3. Like, before, because I was, um, it was pre, um, I was waiting for Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm-hmm. And, like, I didn't, like, know, like, how much fun I was going to have with that game. Uncharted 2? Like blew my fucking mind. Uncharted three, I'll honestly say, was kind of like wasn't like it didn't break new ground, but you know it was still a good experience. And then Uncharted four, I was just like, oh my god, this adventure! It has finally come to an end. It is wholesome. It is great. It is amazing. Ah. So it's like also it's like one of those things about Legend of Zelda. It's like I want you like just in case you like you have trouble with the game. It's like I got this because I beat literally like. On my old place, on my old like Sony account, like I have Uncharted one and two, both platinum. I just don't like couldn't remember my damn password, so I had to make a whole new account. Oh no, it wasn't that. Is that I accidentally forgot the uh, I forgot the password to the Google account that was connected to it, and I'm just all like, this is too much shit to just recover this. What the fuck ever, mm-hmm. man. I gotta go see if fucking Kiwami's like out like right now because I feel like I, I gotta like. Uh, I feel like it's not right away. Like, usually you have to wait a couple days in November. Let me see here. Uh, if it is, though, I should probably go queue up that download, like, if I go out to get some dinner or something. Um, but no, like, I know KH, KH3 and all that bundle's coming out early next year. 
And there's also we. You know, oh, okay, November sixth. November November sixth yeah. is when these games. So are next come down. Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's why PS. It, it's not a huge deal. I just need to make sure I have the money in the bank when the year is over, because I renewed last year in December. So I need to make sure I have some cash in December to cover it. Other than that, I I don't know when they're gonna do the friggin' thing, but I know. The Christmas event in FGO is coming out, so I, I, I want to have a little bit of money left over in my bank so I can buy some quartz if I have to. Mm, um, it's going to be that time. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I, I'm kind of, you know, figuring out kind of what I want, but, you know, thanks to the generous donations of our patrons, we have we have a little bit of cash to throw around to get some stuff now and and do channel stuff with it. Yeah, and I, I am, like, so, like, thankful to you guys. Holy shit. Yeah, not thankful enough to record Lucky Rants yet. I'm joshing you. I'm joshing you. I'm like, you, like I'm trying to like st- like burn a hole into my mic because that is like the quickest thing that's gonna reach you. It's like yeah. honestly, I'm looking at my rants. I'm like, which one do I want to do? I actually asked you, and you didn't say shit. So I'm like, oh, I guess none of them. Well, fine, whatever. <laughs> I listen. I can't. I can't pick the rant. F- the rant for you. Other than that one time I kind of did today, just because it was it was it seemed like perfect timing to me. Also, short, by the way, um, go and look at Lucky's rants because apparently people can react even if they can't post. <laughs> they did. <laughs> people are so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they're reacting. <laughs> so, um, sorry. So, I'm one of those people who I will emote. Like, I won't use emoticons. I literally just type out what I'm doing or feeling. You know, usually with just like in italics, mm-hmm. which is what so, the, the slash me function in Discord does. Yeah. Oh my god. It- <laughs> so I after my rant, like, um, Omega literally says like. Lucky, can you just record all that for me real quick? And I just kind of do, I, I type in, has a mouthful of burrito and just some question marks. So I'm like, hmm? And, like, there have been, eight, like, five, like, eight reactions. Like, three of them are Atoria, and five of them are just the burrito emote. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Oh, my God. People are reacting. <laughs> oh, my God. Huh. Oh. That gives me life. I'm, I'm like, I'll, I'll probably record my rant when I wake up later. Cause That's fine. It is like three thirty. Oh now, yeah, I know. The f- the f- the funny thing also is like, I say that like, cause even if you did that, that's like, like there's a um, there's a Legion video I should do, but I can't do it tonight because I got to turn this into a video. So like, there's there's not a super rush. Like it's, I we like to be timely, but also I hopefully our patron our patrons and just our general listening audience understand that like, obviously stuff comes up. We have real life stuff. And so our schedules are not perfect at this, nope. especially because we have to do stuff all ourselves. And we even, I, God, wow, what would it even be to like buy, like if I wanted to buy like a dedicated, just a render machine to do like, to record things on videos and maybe like run stuff on video all the time. Like, I don't even know. Like that's, that's still a little bit out of our budget range to like um, jump I- into like <laughs> pure work hardware. Yeah, no. Um, Axe just asked us what our experiences with the Yakuza series. Um, I played the original Yakuza back on the PS2. I fucking loved it. I want, I had gotten like Yakuza 2, but I never got a chance to really play it because, um, I shipped out before I could. Mm. And like, that's it. But like, just the first Yakuza, like, super fucking, like, I don't care, Axe. I'm gonna play Kiwami because that's the one I have. Uh, my experience, uh, fucking none. But it's a free game, and it sounds cool. It's just like that's it's, super fucking cool. There's a lot of games that that come out which are good, but I'm like, ah, I'll play that later. I'll wait until it's discounted. Like, like, like Red Dead Redemption. I'm sure it's a, a touchstone moment in games. Um, but like, uh, I I'm not. I don't need to play that right now. That experience will still be here later when it's on sale or something. And I have time and money. All right, so, Axe, let me just tell you right this here. Yakuza 1, the first one, came out, happened before, like, Yakuza 0 was even conceived. 
So even if they do some callbacks to it, it's not going to really be anything important to me as long as I'm getting the experience, I even a better experience than I had in Yakuza 1. And somebody just said they played Kwame without playing Zero and they didn't feel like they lost anything. Yeah. As I said, like, there's a game for free that I just want to play because it's going to harker back to a time when things were a lot simpler. Yeah. No, like, like, I mean, if they, sure, if they go well, maybe if I enjoy it, I'll go back and like, oh, Zero's really good. I'll pick that up sometime. But like, this is still like free game. Free game. Free game. It's it. I'm sure it'll hit themes and stuff I'm interested in. It's funny. I'm playing Mafia 3 right now off and on. How are you so, liking Mafia 3, by the way? Um, After we I got through like that first bit, uh, once once you actually hit open world stuff, it's a lot better. I mean, I miss mm. that as far as I can tell, there's no fast travel and I have to literally drive everywhere. Yeah. I can't actually, even call, kind of a, call slow... a fucking taxi. I like I don't mind for some of it. It's just like. Oh, hey, Cassandra wants to give me like 2,000 bucks literally across the entire city. Well, okay then. That's a long drive. Like, yeah. that's that's really the only... It's It feels like it's got some, some clunkiness to it. Um, Like, I've... This is something I complain I had, but anytime the police chase you automatically as part of a quest, it fucking sucks because the police are awful. Like, they, yeah. they teleport like in front of you. <laughs> they literally teleport in front of you. Yeah. They, well, actually, to be fair, they've done that, like, like in most Grand Theft Auto games, they've done that, too. There's, like, yeah, off and, and on, it, just, it, it feels like, uh, in Mafia 3, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty bad example of that archetype, where, like, oh, I'm, I'm exactly out of the search point zone. If I don't run into any cops, I'll be perfectly free and, and clear. And there's a cop. Oh, I'm literally dead-ending into a bridge, and a cop is literally coming across it. I can't do anything to avoid him. Um, so, yeah, they're just... Yeah, no, like, I've had that complaint about, like, all Grand Theft Autos, it's, like... It's like, how are you good guys just so good at suddenly appearing in front of me? I mean, I played Stop when that. I played five, I didn't remark on that. My mostly complaint about five was that uh, nobody in Rockstar clearly um, watched that Mythbusters episode and cops can kill you underwater, <laughs> like several feet underwater with pistols. That's not how that works, guys. If I'm, I'm at, if I'm at the bottom of the harbor, you, you literally cannot shoot a person. The bullet will explode when it touches the water. Um, but other than that, like, I'm sure that was just a balanced thing because they didn't want it, you to be able to get it on jail free by just diving and in, diving into the ocean. But that was mostly my complaint about cops. It's just like I said, it seems when I'm story required that I have police heat, it seems like the game is a little extra clunky to keep the police on me longer than it needs to in Mafia 3. And they're real good at driving. Yeah. Other than that, it's it's fun. I just, you know. I run around stabbing people and whistling. Whistling is great. Whistling I don't know is. if I still have these screenshots, but I literally once almost cleared out an entire building just by like sitting at one spot, whistling, stealthing them, and just dropping their bodies off mm -hmm. in like in a corner. I didn't even have to drop their bodies. There's one warehouse I didn't even have to drop their bodies in a the corner. They just I was sitting in a doorway. If you're if you're in cover, you drag them behind the cover when you kill them. So you just no no. See so here's the thing. I had so many bodies that they were sliding down around the cover. Whoops. Rip. Uh, but yeah, no, like, I had a big <laughs> enough room that I was, like, just uh, literally only a couple of guys who were, like, literally the other end of the warehouse wouldn't come that far. But, yeah, no, like, I, it's hilarious. I did, like, six or seven or maybe even eight I guys. Hang on, I'm gonna check. Let me turn on my PS4 here real quick. But, yeah, no, like, it's, as just me doing it just to kill time, it's fun. As I said, like, personally, I like the story. I like the documentary style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes a little getting used to, but yeah, I like I said, once once you get out of the, it, they went a little heavy handed in the story intro. Like I don't think they should have maybe, but once you're in the actual play, like open open world aspect, it's it's spaced out enough that it's fine. Because it's like only after major story missions do you get this kind of stuff. When you're yeah. when you're starting out, it's like it feels like every five minutes you take a break from playing the game to watch more documentary footage you don't understand yet because it's all foreshadowing. Those are all trophies. Where is the... There it is! I do still have it. Hang on. I'm gonna, like, upload this to my Twitter real quick so I can show you. But, like, yeah, like, here. Twitter. I'm just gonna share it because it's not gonna last long up there. there. Now I go over to the Twitters. Booyah. Here it is. Copy copy link to tweet. Oh, you mean you don't have to. I'm following you. I'm still, well, I'm going to post it for our Patreon so they can get the experience. Yeah. 
And if you're listening to this later and you want to find it, just go look up Lucky's Twitter. It'll be in the description somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's a lot of guys and a lot of guns. <laughs> that is that is that is another maybe slight negative is I feel like the I feel like the gun plays a little samey like oh I got a oh I've got a shotgun I so that hurts guys who up close really good and then oh I've got a one of the two like rifles oh one of the rifles has a scope one of them doesn't like it it doesn't feel super engaging but honestly, that's okay because just whatever I'm just shooting guys honestly I'm okay with it because I like personally I like 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 I don't like how GTA does it, where you can carry just like infinite fucking guns of fucking. Yeah, no, that's 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 fair. Like you can, the weapon reel is weapon reel in, in GTA, especially in five, uh, is ridiculous. Like, but, like it took me like it ha- I had to like actually cement and, a style I like. Like right now in the game, honestly, like I though, have my like the thing though about GTA is that's got the same problem because that's super samey, right? Like that's the most of those guns are functionally identical. Yeah. So like that's I don't I don't mind that this is like. That that they do have, you know, you're only limited to two. Other than, of course, when I run out of ammo and everything, but mm-hmm. that's, you know, just a me problem. <laughs> um, but more more, it's just like like there's a couple different handguns, and I'm like, these don't feel different at all. Like, okay, when you pick up the scorpion and you have like a machine pistol, that's different. But otherwise, it's just like, okay, so there's a couple of semi-auto pistols. There's a there's a revolver that's more powerful, obviously, but a little less ammo. But like otherwise, it doesn't. Well, I said they all have like those little stat things and you know specific ones, and I will say like the now, I do know that those... you can unlock silenced guns later. That will be yeah. terrifying for the bad guys. <laughs> like right now, like I really like. It took me a while to like to narrow down what exactly I wanted, but like I picked like now I got like the like what I would consider the best sniper rifle, and like what I would consider the best machine pistol because that basically covers all my angles. I have like. Mm-hmm. The well, yeah, and the, the game even points out when you're, like, casing a, a hideout or something, it'll be like, here's a sniper spot. There's an entrance over here, and there's a spot where you can snipe. And that's like, that's very handy. Thank you. Not that I ever, not that I usually stop to snipe, because it's way more entertaining and engaging to just, like I said, just pop in a corner and just start whistling and picking off dudes and blowing stuff up. As my pile of dead bodies can attest, I enjoy that, too. Also, quite frankly, like I said, like, you're... Your aiming's a little shitty. Like, you, like, um, if you scope in, the scope wobbles nuts. Like, if you your your recoil, like aim aim dispersal, can be a little crazy. It's way more accurate to just run up to dudes and just hit tap circle a couple times and then stab them. Yeah, I know. Well, I got real good at the headshots because it reveals your fucking slow down time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's just said, but, fun stuff. Yeah, but no, like once, like once, once, like once they have uh, the element of surprise is lost. No, it's just running gun, run gun punch. Occasionally, um, scary voodoo dolls to freak people out. Yeah, those are fun. <laughs> the screaming zinnies. Well, hey, Lucky. Turns out you weren't wrong. We're at almost three hours. Ha ha! Even though voice this. was only here for one of those hours. I'm happy he came on. No, it was good. It was good of him to spend time with us, and it's also perfectly okay that he had to leave to go do birthday stuff. I was actually kind of worried that he'd be like a little myth that he's like he had some like kind of birthday plans, and then it's like, oh, but I said I'd go hang out with these nerds. Fuck. No, oh, it's fine. Everyone who's listening to this, I want you to go and convince um, Voice to fucking go to SakuraCon and co-host the panel with me, so maybe we can get more famous. Just, just uh, grab uh, the voices, Rocky coattails, and just keep riding. Honestly, that's kind of what we've been doing. Yeah, actually, it's funny because I'm because I don't know if it's because voice was on or not, but uh, that episode of What's Up where he was on temporarily did get way more views than normal. Mm-hmm. It's the voice power. I don't know how many people watched the whole thing, especially considering voices did it at the beginning. But uh, I'll get to revive that thumbnail. But all right, it's almost seven o'clock here. I don't know what time it is for you, but you're probably getting tired. I need to go grab some dinner and I'm stuff, super tired. and start this this monster processing. Um, so I figure if we don't have anything else we want to talk about, we can wind down. I don't like I said, I don't want to promise anything, but I will try and work my way through all of the rest of Zombieland Saga. Um, I'm gonna watch the next um today's menu with Emmy family before Let's Talk FGO tomorrow. I just didn't because that's we normally talk about it on FGO anyway. And um, 
what other stuff did you say? I guess I will, because people are still talking about it, I will try and work on Gridman. Uh, I like, I originally wasn't interested in it because I don't have that nostalgia factor, but just because people are talking about it, I'll, I figure I'll give it a try just so I can throw my hat into that conversation. Yeah, again, like, I'm, I, I, I honestly don't know if I can, like, look, not look at it with my nostalgia goggles and judge it for what it is. Like, that's something, like, I think is, like, important, but at the same time, it's just like, oh, God, it's hard. I just remember have, like, so many feels when I see this stuff. And Rick's thighs! And Akane's boobs! Well, I think that's a great place to end the show there. So I will say, (laughs) hey, everybody, if you like this episode, give it a like. If you have any comments, leave those in the comment section down below, because we love comments. And, of course, if... Once again, for some reason, I feel like What's Up's probably not a show people are jumping into our channel for the first time. But, hey, if you are, good on you. Thanks for sticking out all the way through three hours. And, uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications so you always know when you post a video. And, of course, like we said at the front of the episode, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can access to episodes in audio format, downloadable, immediately after we're done with them for as little as a dollar a month. And lots of other goodies, like some of our higher tiers uh, who have joined us this entire time listening. Always fun. And yeah, so that's uh, that's what's up, everybody. We'll see you whenever the next time is. Probably if people are listening to what's up, it's going to be when we post Let's Talk FGO. Probably. But I'm done for today.